Coming up on this episode of Brody Even Talk Pinball, we interview special guest Mike Primo from Path of Play. We're going to recap the critical hit tournament we held here in Buffalo. We're going to take a look at the total nuclear annihilation reveal. Rolls off the tongue. And we're going to go through our experience at Pinburg 2017. We've also got some viewer email questions. And last but not least, we're going to review Bram Stoker's Dracula and the new Star Wars from Stern Pinball. Coming right up. Double Super Jackpot! Ladies and gentlemen, pinball is now more popular than turtle racing. Your hosts, Nick Lane and Kevin Manny of Buffalo Pinball. Say it again. Thank you, Rudy Soup. That was a surprise <laughs> to me. So that's classy. We're really, uh, really getting there, Kevin. Yep. How's it going? Um, I'm exhausted. Yes. I'm hurting. <laughs> if you see me staring off into space, if you're watching this live, uh, that's because we were at Pinburg. Uh, from last Wednesday, yep. Pinburg started Thursday, but we were on, in Pittsburgh last Wednesday, and then we got back yesterday. Yep. Uh, everybody was sleeping on the way back in Rob's <laughs> minivan. <which laughs> Rob was, was driving like a champion. Yeah. <laughs> so we got back safely, um, but I, I'm still recovering. Uh, what about you, Kev? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I did not, um, you know, partake of the libations to to the same level as the rest of the bro. You group. were just as tired. You fell asleep in the van before me, so I, did, I don't know what your excuse was. The recovery uh, was much quicker, I think. Probably. Um, you know, four days of pinball and hanging out and staying up late and getting up early. It, it gets to you whether you're drinking or not. So. Yeah, it hurts, but it was a lot of fun. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> let's, let's mosey right along and get into the partner things before we uh, s- officially start the show. So I'm going to do this in reverse order to keep it fresh. Uh First of all, these are the our, our partners who support us and help make this show possible. So consider supporting them, um, not just as a favor, but because they have amazing products. First is up Tilt Cycle. Tilt Cycle makes upcycled pinball art. That's Dan Burfield out in Pittsburgh. He was at Replay FX and he had some awesome things. Kevin bought some some goodies from him. So did Jay. And so did Rob, I think. And so did Rob. <laughs> I've already got my Burfield, so I'm good. That's right. Uh, and I'm running out of space to hang things up, so mm-hmm. we'll, we'll get more. Uh, he's got a coupon code. I mean, type in Buffalo, it's 20% off, which is pretty damn sweet. Pinball Arcade, who is also at Replay FX. We saw Mike Lindsay. He's going to be a guest at some point. Uh, pinball Arcade makes recreations of, of real pinball machines. You can play them on pretty much every platform that exists uh, in modernity. Titan Pinball. Titan makes, among other things, but their signature product is Silicon Rings. So replace the rubber rings on your, your pinball machines. Uh, Kevin and I use Titans in all of our games, at least in the, the flipper rubber. Uh, you know, There's a lot of work to replace rubber rings, yeah. but we'll get there. Usually I'm too that. lazy to replace them all, but they always go yeah. on the flippers. Yeah, <laughs> and if I like a game a lot, it's going to be in there because yep. then it shines. Coupon code of Buffalo for 10% off. Community Beer Works, they make delicious, delicious beers. We just had a launch party down there uh, uh, last week for a Star Wars launch. Uh, they love pinball. And they love delicious beers. Check them out. Especially when you come up for the Buffalo Pinball Summer Open. Oh, baby. Jersey Jack Pinball. Jersey Jack. No introduction needed. I mean, come on. He makes Hobbit, Wizard of Oz, and the new Dialed In, which Kevin and I are eagerly awaiting our Dialed Ins. Pinball Life. If you have a pinball machine, it's going to break at some point. And you're going to need parts. So why not go to pinballlife.com? They support us. They have great prices, great customer service. They have mods. They have pinballs just in general. If you need a pinball for your pinball machine, all kinds of good stuff. That's pinballlife.com. Double Danger. Again, our friends who were at uh, Replay FX, right next to Tilt Cycle, Double Danger has amazing uh, uh, pinball lifestyle wear. Let's call it, <laughs> aka t-shirts uh, and work shirt. They have polos now, so you get a Double Danger and wear it to work. Oh my God, <laughs> class in and all, man. <laughs> they, they uh, I saw a lot of the world's okayest pinball player. That's yeah. kind of one of their signature that's, shirts. That's their hit. They've got a lot of they got a lot of great ones, including including our shirts now. So they if you do. want a Buffalo Pinball shirt with the uh, Buffalo Pinball logo on the front and that skull in the back, head on over to DoubleDanger.com and uh, use the coupon code of Buffalo. It's actually Buffalo. ddpinball.com. ddpinball.com. Yes. And that will give you 15% off. And last but not least, Comet Pinball. 
maker of the best pinball t-shirt in blue that says Comet ever made. Yes. See how I did there? <laughs> you nailed it. Uh, <laughs> I guess what they're really known for is, is LEDs. That's Ryan Wenger, who was our, our last guest last month. Ryan's a great guy. Um, you know, we, we put in Comet pinball LEDs into the ones we have on route. And some of our games at, at this game on place, is, it's really dark there. Mm-hmm. They look phenomenal. Yeah, it they're... looks really good. Mm-hmm. And I've gotten a lot of compliments from like the players there who, who were playing those games. And then they went to like another location. They're like, I couldn't even see what the hell was going on. These are, these are great. So yep. I owe thanks to Comet because he has great LEDs. So check them out, CometPinball.com. All right. Now you get to see us again. And not only do you get to see us again, you get to see our guest. And our guest today is Mike Primo. He's executive director of Path of Play. Uh, he was also the man behind the magic at Pinburg, uh, as far as the uh, broadcast was concerned, some of the new features and, and instant replays and things like that. Uh, Mike was the man behind that. So welcome to the show, Mike. Guys, it's great to see you again after it. <laughs> well, Nick, I didn't get to see you at all. I, and I actually looked for you on the first day. Uh, Not hard enough, I, apparently, I, man. Come on. Well, I, I, I heard that you hide in a corner somewhere when you're in competition mode. You know what, though? I, I do. I do make myself sparse. You might, if yeah. you heard any cursing, that would have been an uh, There was better. a lot of cursing, but it doesn't mean it was you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel in my element there. I can blend in. Nick was among <laughs> yeah. his people, for sure. <laughs> well, it was great to see you again, Kevin. And uh, Nick, even if through uh, the podcast here, it's great to see you, too. And I hope you uh, feel... I started feeling human uh, about three hours ago. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a marathon, for sure. So... Um, so we got to know Mike through the bro show. Um, so you yeah. kind of like found us online or something and we're like, Oh, these guys play pinball and also board games. And there's some crossover interest there. We had you on the bro show. Uh, and now you're, so you're, you're a big board game fan. You have a, you have a podcast, but now you're getting Very involved much, yeah. with this project called path of play. So why don't you talk to us about what path of play is, how, it comes together and brings board gaming and pinball and all that together in one place. Sure. Well, the reason I had originally reached out uh, to the bro show is because I was producing a documentary, a radio doc for CBC about um, how people are looking to reinvigorate their, their social interaction with analog activity and pinball, I thought was a a very important component of that story. Um, at the board game podcast, uh, Nights at the Game Table, took a hiatus in January because we found out that our son, Luke, he's three and a half now, and we found out he was diagnosed with autism. And we weren't we weren't happy or sad. We were just kind of nothing, more, more confused because we didn't know what it meant. We didn't know what kind of road it was going to pose for him. It, you're, it's almost like that scene in... I think it was the natural, you know, Robert Redford walks out into this dark baseball field and then all these lights just turn on and you realize you're surrounded in this completely other different world. And so you just kind of have to sit back and take it day by day. And and especially with autism, because there there is a saying uh, that we became aware of rather quickly is if you've met one person with autism, you've only met one person with autism, meaning the personalities are so dynamic. Um, Each person individuals challenges strengths they're all very different and so it was almost like all of a sudden we were we were we were getting to know our son all over again um what we discovered thankfully rather early on was that he started gravitating to my passions which is board games and pinball and um we were starting to realize that our situation was not as challenging as other families that we had spent time with. Um, and so we thought, well, we, we still have some challenges and, and not to get too much into the autism, but for example, one of his behavioral traits, he, he started, uh, having a, a biting, um, he started biting himself when he was getting frustrated and, um, you know, you could say, well, lots of toddlers do that. But when you start to pair it with other behavioral traits, then you start to become concerned. It's their way of coping. But luckily for Luke, he's been the kind of kid that any any kind of challenge that has surfaced, he's he's seemed to find this way to cope. And it's I'm really proud of him for for doing that. Like even as young as he is, to see that he's capable of of making those kinds of choices 
um, makes us hopeful that this can be a road that we can manage. But knowing that there are other families out there, and we've met them in the last four or five months, that that struggle to find those forms of therapy where kids can cope and even families for that matter can have even 15 minutes to just escape and have that time to themselves. Like the demands on a parent, you know, my wife and I, we still have, we only have one child and we still can find time for ourselves. But for parents that have, you know, maybe children on a spectrum that are a little bit more severe or other special needs, that are are more challenging it's very difficult to find those escapes just for yourself and i feel like board games and pinball are wonderful avenues of escapes because we all know a a game of pinball can last as little as three minutes most mostly in that case for me but um but yet still such a joy and it and if you know all it takes is one great shot or one great ball on an em and subconsciously, you're forgetting everything around you. Like, you know, a lot of people, maybe maybe their goal is to get as good as they can get at pinball. But I think it's good for us to remind ourselves that another thing pinball does is, you know, after you play that game, ask yourself if subconsciously you just forgot about everything else going on in your life. And, and I think that's the absolute best thing about pinball because then it doesn't matter what you're scoring. You're just, you're spending time with people and you're enjoying the hobby for what it is. And so... My wife talked about my wife and I talked about this, and what we wanted to do was have a family game day, um, and host other families that maybe don't know that pinball is an option or that these modern day board games that have come out are an option. I mean, there's a wonderful company called Haba Games, and they make amazing games for families. You can't find these games in a big box store. You have to be aware of these games more or less as a as a pure hobbyist. And so we wanted we we brought in about ten kids. Some of them had special needs, but some of them didn't because we also wanted to show that kids are capable of leaving their differences at the door and they can celebrate their similarities through play and be together. And we made a a, a promo video that we released last week. It got played on the Papa um, stream when we were there on the weekend. And you would be hard pressed to look at those kids and and know which ones had special needs and which ones didn't. And that was kind of the point was I was going to put my son out there But that's where it stopped. We really wanted to be sure that these kids were not identified as left or right or black and white. And the response has been fantastic. So uh, going forward, like what is your your ultimate vision for Path of Play? Where do you see it going beyond, Mm. you know, you're just getting started. You're very ground level with this. Yeah. Um, What do you see on the road ahead for Path of Play? Well, there's there's two core competencies that I would really like to see us fulfill. One is being able to help families financially when they have to provide therapy to their for their child. Um, for my wife and I, we were in an interesting situation because he was deemed to, to be mild per se, and because of that, we were told that we could get publicly funded therapy. Uh, for him, but it would take up to two years. And the problem was we were going into a restaurant having to leave five minutes after going in because he wasn't comfortable with strangers. He'd start screaming at them, so we'd have to leave. And I I don't want to get into the varying opinions of what people think of behavioral therapy, but when it comes to things like that, I very much support the idea of, of providing your child with a kind of therapy where they can at least enjoy their environments, even if it's in a rudimentary form. We wanted to be able to go to restaurants and, and now he loves it. So, but it's very expensive because we had to choose, do we get private therapy and bite the bullet or do we wait for up to two years and have that impact his ability to put his best foot forward? And so we have, um, uh, geek and son who make very elaborate board game tables in the UK. They're actually, They have a very special uh, raffle going on that they're announcing tomorrow. And uh, they are reaching out to us to support the organization Path of Play, but they've also indicated that they want to help us with Luke's therapy. And this was something that they told us way back in January before the Path of Play idea even started. This, This did not exist when they told me this, and so it really gave me chills to think that somebody would step up and and do something like this. So they're a wonderful company, and... um, we became great friends over there. And so originally the idea was, well, let's, 
let's have raffles on a monthly basis and help these families. That's what I wanted to do was I, I wanted to show my appreciation and uh, host a gaming stream, but also on a monthly basis do these raffles because I, I figured out that if if we did a raffle once a month, we could actually pay for a family's therapy for a year at six hours a week, which is the minimum you have to pay for to um, get into a private service. And so that made me feel really good that I, I had thought of, of figuring out a way to help other families. But then I, as you're learning about autism, I found out that there's actually 70,000 kids in Ontario alone on the spectrum. So all of a sudden it felt like a real small drop in the ocean. And uh, when we came up with this idea for Path of Play to say, well, what if we, what if we use gaming to, um, as a tool and as a form of therapy, then I started feeling like it was going to be a, a greater impact because now not only are we offering a form of, of therapy to these kids and these families, but we're also dealing with the inclusion issue, which is being talked about in in all facets of hobbies like board gaming and pinball and and you know making um, women feel comfortable or whatever your orientation is or your religious background like all that stuff we're trying to you know have a bigger base of equality so there was an opportunity to to deal with that and that's the second thing we want to do is have a, a facility that we can operate on a daily basis where we are exercising um, exactly what this promo unveiled so if if you go to pathofplay.com all you have to do is scroll down to the bottom of the page and you can watch that promo and that promo says so much more than all the words i've already said you you'll get it what you see in that video is what we want to do every single day in that facility i would even go as far to say that I would like to do things like, you know, you bring in a grade eight classroom and they walk in and see like 30, 40 pinball machines and a permanent live stream studio and hundreds of board games and a quiet room if, if they're ki some of the kids are having sensory issues. Um, but they would think that it's just like this cool place to play. And then when you, when you explain to them what it is you're really trying to do, you're always going to find two or three kids with their heads on their shoulders. Those kids are, you can always find those kids. It's just... You, you have to make them aware of the opportunities for them to be involved in things like this. And what you're doing is now um, you're you're giving kids with special needs a chance to actually be with neurotypical kids and they can become each other's role models. And that's that's the thing I'm really excited and hopeful about. That's awesome. So you've got um, uh, you're starting to kick off a fundraiser. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that mm. and uh, the live stream that you got coming up in December? Yeah, we just uh, kicked this off this week, and what what we feel is the best way to raise these funds um, because we're 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 going to need hundreds of thousands of dollars to you know rent this facility and buy these pinball machines. Um, there is uh, we've we've teamed up with Rally Up. Uh, they are helping us manage the fundraising, but essentially what we want to do is have a gaming marathon on December second of this year. We're calling it Path of Play Day, and it's a team-based marathon. So it's it's very much like the Heart and Stroke Foundation, where you know an entity will get their team together of ten to twenty people. Uh, Kevin brought up the sign up page there. Thanks for for doing that. I'm sure it'll be in the show notes or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but you can sign up and either create a team, or you can join a team that already exists. Which, by the way, Buffalo Pinball graciously did today. So thank you guys very much for for doing that. So they can sign up on your team, and then every gamer's goal will be to raise one hundred dollars. So I'll just use my own personal experience as the way to explain this. Uh, a friend of mine uh, has a has his daughters on the spectrum, and we grew up together. We're we've been friends since we were four years old, and they were having a walkathon. And I, I joined their team and a couple of Facebook posts, uh, it was all it took to raise $200 in three days. So it's a very, very simple process where you join a team, you're registered, you share a link on your Facebook page once or twice. And, and that hundred dollar goal should be achieved really quickly. We our, our hope is that we can establish two to 300 teams with 10 players each. Uh, that will vary. Some team will will have ten. We have we also have a generic path of play team. If you're coming as a free agent or a single player and just want a team to join on, so that one will probably have close to 100 people or so. 
And uh, if we get to that, then we can raise our, we can reach our goal of two to three hundred thousand dollars. We actually have a breakdown of how we would spend all that money too on our webpage. So if you go to the FAQ, all of that stuff is explained. I, can, I mean, I, if there's anything I've learned, I can't stress the importance of, of being clear about you know what we want to do with the funds, so that you know, I'd rather just do that right up front. And it, it, part of it includes. More than half of it includes helping families, but part of it is going to allow me to transition out of my regular job so I can spend more time cultivating relationships. This is a fundraiser that's really based on the power of people, and, and so far it's come out of the gate strong, and hopefully we can, we can uphold that. Great. Awesome. Well, obviously you're very passionate about this, Mike, so um, it's a great <laughs> endeavor. I, I think um, I'm seeing some of the comments. Uh, people find this very interesting, and... Um, I'm glad we could be a part of it and put together a team to to help this cause. I'll tell you what, man. It's you meet a lot of people in hobbies. Um, you a lot of meet a lot of people in the hobby that produce media, and sometimes those relationships stick, and sometimes they don't. I, I really want to tell you guys how much I appreciate your friendship, with or without this project. It's been a joy to play pinball and be on your show, and I have enjoyed uh, playing board games with Nick and Martha, and and when Joe uh, Joey C from Toronto came by and hung out with us. Uh, I it, it's the best thing about any hobby is the relationships you you develop. So thanks for that, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Anything else you want to add before we wrap things up here? Yeah, Dracula is better than Star Wars. Oh, <laughs> you're starting the trouble right. early. Okay, well, just we're drop done. the mic. <laughs> we're gonna end the podcast there. <laughs> but you know, you never know what a code or two will do—a code update, right? Yeah, so see where it we'll goes. see. Have you have That's you got right. any um any any? So you mentioned Geek and Son. Who are your other partners that are helping you in this? Oh yes, I uh, you know there's so much to talk about, right? And you you try to sometimes you forget. I'm I'm a fool for forgetting this. One of the really interesting parts of this story was when I reached out to Jack Oneri uh, at Jersey Jack, and I told him about this project. I mean, these companies get these requests every single day. And I, Jack, before again, before this even happened, I, I really felt like Jack was, he was one of my favorite people very quickly. Like, I just loved his passion. I loved the, the creativity that went into The Wizard of Oz is just it just blows my mind how much work he did to get that off the ground and now you know he's he's established he puts a pin out when the pin is ready and i appreciate that i have no problem saying that publicly because i think that's one of his strengths and i'm at the point now where when they announce a machine i i don't have a problem putting my money down with them because now they're sending a message about how they're going to handle it and that's great so i told jack about the I told Jack about the project and I said, listen, here's the deal. I, I don't have the money for pinball machines. I, my, my money goes to my son's therapy. But we're starting this organization. Here's the idea. Here's what it's about. We're gonna be, our funding goal is two to $300,000. I just need some time. And he said, I can, I can do that for you. I said, I'm happy to buy the pinball machines, Jack, but can you just get me these machines so that we can have this family day and show really what it is that that we want to do and what's in this little <laughs> teeny tiny head of mine so he he sent a wizard of oz off and it dialed in and it's paired up with a bally eight ball and a royal flush and my son he loves dialed in if, if you see the video in the promo he actually called his shot and he made it and it just i just get a chill even just saying that like that first moment when your little one actually makes a connection with that pinball machine. He cradled it and everything. He did a dead bounce pass, cradled it, and then shot it in the theater. It was awesome. And uh, Tommy out at Nitro Pinball, who I failed to mention in the Papa stream, and I apologize for that, Tommy. I met Tommy and Suzanne at Pinburg finally. And what a what a great couple. Like They're just so friendly. They're so good for pinball. And, um, and we've made an arrangement with him. He's going to be um, sending off uh, an attack from Mars, a remake attack from Mars. And that's coming probably in about three or four weeks. And, and uh, he, he extended the same arm to us that, um, that Jack did. But, you know, like I said, a lot of, there's a lot of people with ideas. And I, I'm, I'm treading my water very carefully because, you know, it's, there's so many people that want to do good things and, and, um, the, uh, the support has just been unending. I mean, we had a gaming lawyer come up and offer to do all our legal for us. 
you know, stuff like that is, you know, CBC where I work, they're, they're going to be producing a couple of stories. Um, I have tried very hard to, to talk with people that I know and say, help me find holes in this so that, uh, we can do this right. And, and for some reason, what I keep getting is just this wonderful response. And, and now we're building up our team of people. We have Sen Fung Lim, who he designed Belfort. I don't know if you're familiar with Belfort, Nick, but uh, he's a very prominent board game designer, uh, the Bamboozle Brothers. And, and um, Erica Hayes has joined us on our board of directors. We've been uh, approved by the Government of Canada as an official nonprofit organization. All these things have just been wonderful. And now... The, the real time is here where we need these gamers. We need the gamers to sign up and raise that $100 because I'm really excited about the possibilities. We're going to do good things with that money. We're going to really, we're going to, I want to change lives. I want to, I want to really, I want, you know, it's the thing about, the, the thing that's challenging about special needs is that parents constantly wonder what that road lies ahead. And that's, I feel like, you know, it's not just therapeutic for the kids, it's therapeutic for the parents to, to, to give them a, an escape through pinball or board games is something that I really want to do so that even if they can just forget about the challenges for a little while, that matters to me a lot because my, as I said, my wife and I, we don't feel we have the most challenging situation and we have that energy to help them. Well, great. I really appreciate you uh, coming on the show. Uh, really looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks at the Buffalo Pinball Summer Open. And uh, yeah. thanks for everything you're doing with uh, with Path of Play and uh, bringing the technical skills to, uh, to pinball <laughs> uh, broadcast coverage. It's awesome to see. Well, it's a growing evolution. We, we did some things right. I know there's some things we'd like to do differently. There's some things we want to change. That's the, that's the evolution, but this has been talked about a lot for the last couple months, right guys? Yep. And, um, and so we need to be all ears and, and be receptive to the feedback, um, so that we can, we, I think the key to this is establishing ourselves as if we're already on the same platform as poker or darts or whatever, like let's treat ourselves that way. It's kind of how I thought about my podcast too, is like, okay, I don't want to buy the cheap gear. I want to buy the good gear as if I'm already a mainstream show. And I think that's how you guys look at the bro show. I think you guys, you know, care about your production value very much. And that's, that's, I think if we do more of that in our pinball streams and our, in our tournaments, then hopefully a, a, that big player that we talk about all the time will come along. And cause I do think pinball is going to, is it's the next poker. I think it is <laughs> just, I just don't know when it's going to pop. If it's you know awesome. What I'm it saying. just needs a little bit of push the right person yeah. to see it, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks, thanks for being here. And, and, and have a good night, everybody. Yeah, we'll see you. Thanks, uh, Mike. We'll see you soon. All right, cheers. Yeah, three weeks, right? <laughs> That's right. All right, goodbye. All right, cheerio. All right. Okay, well, that was Mike from uh, Path of Play. Check out, um, we'll show you the website one more time here. You can sign up for the, uh, the fundraiser at pathofplay.rallyup.com slash pathofplay. Um, join the Buffalo pinball team, help us raise a thousand dollars for path of play for the team. How many meat mounds would Jay have to eat to get to a thousand dollars? If we, uh, do a contest with that. I don't know. We'll, we can let the chat room, uh, we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll vote on that. We'll butter the lives of many others by ruining the life of one person. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. Oh, so real quick, um, story from Pinburg. I know we're going to get into Pinburg, but we're talking about meat mounds. So we, we went to Arby's for lunch. Yeah, and of course we did. Of course we did. The dinner. <laughs> of course we did. And Brunch, I believe. We're not even sponsored by Arby's. But anyways. It's, yeah. It's uh, so we go to Arby's for lunch. We're standing in line, and I'm I'm behind Jay, and Jay's in line, and next to him on the counter is a giant picture of a meat mountain. And it. Uh, so I'm like looking at it, and we're like laughing, and the, the cashier goes, don't ever eat that. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> unprompted. Yeah. <laughs> unprompted. So we're... We're like, and so I go. This guy ate one. She goes, and you didn't get diabetes, which makes no, which makes no <laughs> sense. But she, there. but she knows, she knows, she knows it's, it's bad. She exactly. knows it's not good. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess nobody's ever bought it there, or like, really? at least from her. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. she was just like nobody buys that. Nobody buys. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, thanks, Arby's. Me, my own talk. Yep. All right. So why don't we get into our news and updates for the for the month? This is that we snuck this podcast in right before the end of the month. So we were supposed to go record last week, but my internet decided to stop working for about twelve Namus hours. Namus says you're quiet. I'm quiet. I can uh, I can turn myself up. I know you you guys want to hear me. So I guess. All right. 
Um, actually, you know what it happens is like after Skype goes. Oh, off, that's why. Yeah, it, it's it's it, fine. It pops down. Yeah, it so just pops I'll just down. turn the overall mix up a little bit. So there you go. Um, all right, cool. So um, quick update on what we what we've been doing. Um, so was it probably three weeks ago now we uh i ran a critical hit tournament here and i want to just recap that a little bit because a lot of people tend to have questions about that format so the format is it's a a three strikes tournament when and you have these cards uh designed by carl d'angelo if you've ever played magic the gathering or um uh hearthstone something like that uh you, you have these cards that you get dealt um so how we did it was some of the some of the turn some of the tournaments will run like a a, a four hour match play where you earn cards. Uh, we wanted to kind of make it a little uh, a little more condensed, not qu- draw it out quite as much, not really make everybody hate pinball quite so much. So we uh, we ran we just we cut it off at three thousand on IFBA. So if you're in the top three thousand on IFBA, you got two cards. If you're under the top three thousand, you got three cards so it give you a little bit of a benefit if you weren't quite as high highly ranked um and they were dealt at random when you came in and they were put in an envelope so you could kind of like look at what you had and then stash it on the table and then throughout the tournament when you felt the opportunity was best you could play one of your cards there's there's like a, a period before you play and then a, a period after you play to play cards um because there are some cards that affect the game you just played and there are other cards that will affect the game you're about to play. So, um, I, there's one card called, uh, darkness and in that, with that card, you cover up the score displays on the screen and I was in, it got played three times. I was in all three groups that did that. That was actually kind of fun because, um, I don't know. It just kind of like makes it a wild card. You, you think you're doing well, but you don't know for sure until you take that, the what we were using like a piece of cardboard with painter's tape to cover up the display and uh it was pretty cool um it it tended to start off slow as as far as like people playing cards uh but when once people got down to like their last strike they got more desperate and were like were like throwing them out there i know everybody's trying to knock nick out of the tournament and then so like somebody played that was fun that was fun yeah yeah (laughs) everyone ganged up on me (laughs) it was really great good times (laughs) somebody played a card to knock nick out and then i think it was uh um pinhead john like played a card to save you and then somebody else played a card to cancel that out so yeah. he ended up being out was- pinhead, pinhead john's really like you've you you i, I owe you my friend <laughs> he does you're my he, you're in the you're in the good column Nick gave him a hug and then he got kicked out yeah. anyway so yeah um overall i i think i liked it a lot i think um it's something we'd run maybe once a year maybe i'll make it an annual yeah. thing i think the annual thing's great I, I i would definitely recommend it to other um uh, league cities or whatever you know just once a year tournament, great, right? Mm-hmm. Something something different. You can't do pump and dumps. You can't do match play all day. Right, it gets boring. It, it mixes that. it up for sure. And uh, Carl's working on a match play version of it now. So I know folks had were asking me if the cards were available still. So they're not. the The three strikes ones are sold out. But he's working on a match play version. We should probably buy the match play version because they're going to get sold out. I think they're ready, right? He was advertising, or maybe not. I think he was just kind of like unveiling. The I cards see. All with, right, like the Modica play right. card. <laughs> when they come out, let's order some because yeah, then we'll have you know. Them. Once they're gone, they're gone. And then you can get new, uh, new little card holders for them and everything. You yeah, put them in a box. I know that's your favorite part. So, well, we all, they we didn't get, get destroyed. They, they didn't get destroyed. They did not. I'm proud of our guys. They're twenty dollars, and they're, he's never. You know, they're going to disappear one day. So, yep, we're good. Beautiful. Saved forever. Cool. So that was critical hit. Uh, let's talk about. We had a new pinball machine. It was kind of revealed already, but we finally saw some some pictures of it, and that is. So I have I have a, a tab here. It's called TNA picks on the layout, but it's actually. Total nuclear annihilation. So we had kind of seen the back glass and some other little little pieces of uh, of art from this, but uh, full play field pictures, full cabinet pictures got uh, released. So the cabinet, it, it kind of reminds me of like a, a mid eighties Bally with like the the big like yeah. ball on the side, uh, but it's got laser cut side rails that say total nuclear annihilation. It's really cool. Um, it's got like a rotating beacon on the top, like a police siren. That's pretty cool. Uh, so it has both alphanumeric displays i don't know if they're alphanumeric or just numeric but um it's got like the old school displays and also a lcd display on it as well um this is the the denisi lock they're calling it so to lock the balls on this there's a a series of of stand-up targets that um are in line or drop targets actually uh and you 
put a ball in the back, it pops up and locks one, locks two, locks three, and that's how you lock up your multi-ball. Uh, but this is really the first time we're seeing the play field art. None of this has been been seen before. Um, what were your impressions of the, the art when it came out? Uh, I mean, I, I like it. Uh, it's kind of vibrant. It's got a little bit of a Skittle nature to it on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I like it. it. It's 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 good. It's not love, but I, I like it. And I think most people online are really happy with the art package on that. And it's got, you know, that nice 80s kind of, it's got that retro 80s vibe that's really in style right now. Like that whole synth wave music and all that good stuff, right? Yeah. And that's, that. I know that's the vibe he was going for. That's, that's the art vibe. I don't, he's not doing synth wave for the soundtrack, which is a whole different story. But, um, <laughs> and people yeah. are in love with the soundtrack for this too. But. Yeah, I am. I'm, that's where, that's, that's where I'm mostly interested in. I it. think my favorite part was that the, uh, stand up target spell out rad. On the left, that's pretty great. Oh that's shit! Very I didn't even notice that. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I like it. It's different. Yeah. It's it's something that it's something different. That I can see it standing out in the collection. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. Yeah. people love it who've played it. Yeah. from what I've heard, like I've heard like nothing but good things about it in terms of the gameplay. Um, looking at the game itself, uh, I I'm, I'm cool with the idea of like a more simple layout, right? Mm-hmm. Without ramps, having. A new game like that with some of today's technology and rules can be really interesting in the lock. Um, it's it's a unique design, yeah. So it's hard for me to form an opinion on. There's no there's no toys on the game, right? Right. It's just very basic. Um, so yeah, be it, it, I'm 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 super curious to try the game. Yeah. So it, I w- when I initially saw the pictures, I thought Star Trek, Stern Star Trek. That's what immediately like popped oh, into my okay. mind. It was like, yeah, I can, I can, field. I can see that. This, the kind of like, uh, you know, industrial kind of feel and just like the colors and how it is and uh, just kind of a general look to it. That's what it reminded wobbly me of. Wobbly just said that too. See? Boom. Jinx. <laughs> see? Wobbly and I. We're... Yeah, I, I see that. Wobbly, now. how's your hot tip, by the way? You got to let us know. Um, so yeah, that's we wanted to show that off. That was the first time. Uh, so that got kind of revealed during uh, Pinburg while we were all down at Pinburg, and everybody was kind of a buzz about it. So it was cool to see. Um, all right, I heard he was while well, he was speaking of which he was down at Pinburg trying to show pictures of his hot tip to people. What? And they weren't having Come on. it. You yeah, can't just whip that out anywhere. No. You know what I mean. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> all right. Speaking of Pinburg, let's get into it. Um, so we headed down there. On Wednesday, uh, five adult males in a minivan, uh, piloted by our own uh, man of hat, Rob Metzler. We made it down there around dinner time, and we headed down to Kickback Cafe, uh, which was pretty cool and chill until about 6.30 or so, because they opened up the pre-registration for Pinburg. Uh, that was one of the spots for it, and then it just got absolutely mobbed. Uh, they were running... a uh, a Wednesday, they do a Wednesday night uh, weekly tournament there. I think it was a three strikes with a 40-player max, and that, that got maxed out. They couldn't allow anybody else upstairs. It was packed. They had to, like, shut off the door, shut off the doors and, like, have one in, one out because they were, like, over capacity at the, at the door. But um, the place looks great. They redid the floors. Um, everything's awesome. I asked um, – I was talking to Doug Polka on Sunday at Penberg, and I said, did you guys fix the air conditioning in there? Because I remember it being really hot the last time I was there. He said, yes, air conditioning's fixed. I had a sandwich. It was great. Um, the games were playing great. They had Star Wars. A bunch of people were playing Star Wars. And, uh, yeah, it was great. I even picked up my, my Indiegogo backer stuff, so I got a T-shirt upstairs uh, for uh, for kickback. I'm, I'm stoked to have that. Um, what else? So the next morning was, uh, was Penberg, and we all – so – Pinburg is, and I kind of had to explain this while we were live streaming from the event. It's the first day, everybody plays everybody. And then the second day, based on your performance of the first day. Well, you should back that up because if you say everybody plays everybody, there's 800 people well, there. Yeah. It's you're, like, yeah. you're playing against, there's no division. There's, there's, there's five rounds on Thursday and five rounds on, on Friday. And the Thursday, you might be in a round with an, uh, player who's an a player or mm-hmm. something you know you might have keith elwin in your round right right the first round but as you start doing better in the tournament let's say in a round the most points you can get are 12 points so then round two you're going to tend to play other people who got like 12 or 11 points mm-hmm. and that's and you're sort of kind of finding where you're going to end up by the end of thursday yep and then what, what, what kevin's trying to say is that by friday you're just stuck in like a division so mm-hmm. kind of the walls close in right you kind of section things off so yep. 
the was it one through maybe like 200 something like that is a and mm. then 200 to 400 is b and, and so on yeah they actually expanded out a for some reason a little bit this year um next volume is a lot higher than kevin's I think I just talk louder. Yeah, I, I think talk right just, into it. Yeah, I am, I'll I'm, just boost I, me up yeah, a little bit. There you go. <laughs> Nick likes to get right up on that microphone. I do. Um, yeah. So, what else? What else can we talk about, Penberg? So I ended after day one. Day one was it was kind of uh, I was doing okay, and then I got a one in my group. So you can, you can get a maximum of twelve. You got points. a one in the first round. Uh, in like it was like round three, I think. Oh, okay. I was like I had like a six and a seven, and then I got a one, and I was just like. Oh, that's the worst. And so it's really hard to come back from that to like get up into A or even B. So I ended up in C. Um, you ended up in B division, right? Yeah. Um, and then so for Friday, so other people from our group, like uh, Jeff ended up in B. Uh, Jay was in C. He, f- he qualified higher than I did, which we'll never hear the end of. He was pretty, actually, he was pretty cool about it. Yeah. <laughs> he could have really shot his mouth out. He could have. We'll yeah. hear about it. Yeah, we'll hear, we'll hear about it. Yeah. Anytime we talk trash about him on the stream, he'll just bring that up. But it, overall, I finished higher than he did. So uh, Mixer Tuna ended up in D, and Rob also finished in, in, in D, or fin- ended up in D. So I only had, Fugo, I only had to play one nineties Gottlieb. What? And I blanked out whatever that game is so let's not even try to yeah let's try to bring it up i'll let you know what it is if i can think of it yeah i played one too i'm sure i'll remember what it was oh it was shack attack i got to play shack attack oh okay that was terrible i'm sorry (laughs) yeah it was really bad (laughs) um i think i did okay that round otherwise but um it was just like giving out magic multi-balls to people and stuff randomly it was like where's my magic multi-ball bullshit yeah it was bullshit so um yeah, so I ended up finishing qualifying into C division playoffs. I had a perfect round, which was awesome. So I got a medal for getting a, a twelve. I almost, I almost had the perfect round when you had a perfect round, but Rudy Soup was a jerk and and took it away from me. Decided to beat me on the last game. Rudy Soup. Yep. He does an intro for the show and then he thinks he can beat you and take yep. away your medal. No, he's ta- every time I got to <laughs> be doing the show now, I got to see him taunting me. Yeah, he okay. may as well just be holding up that medal. All right. <laughs> that was cool. Uh, <laughs> So I ended up, I finished up like top 16 in C. Did we tell about Manahan? Do we not even mention him? I mentioned it. Okay. There were, were, I said Rob. Rob. That's, oh, nobody that's knows why. that it's Rob. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Manahan was in D. He yeah. made the D playoffs, man. Yeah. So, yeah. And he, I think he made, he was, uh, he made it through the first round, but not the second. Uh, Mixer Tuna qualified second. So he got a double bye into the, I think the semifinals. Oh, the wow. quarter, quarterfinals. Oh, um, but he made it all the way. He ended up finishing fourth in D division, which okay. was awesome. It was fun. And we had kind of like impromptu decided to stream from our phones, and we we had pretty good viewership. People were watching. They I think they were just as excited to see the the action in D division as they did in uh, in A. But it was it was fun, and uh, you know, there's some, some great moments and good comebacks, and uh, people were rooting on their the the folks they recognized from the show. So that was fun. Um, any any hi- standout highlight moments from Pinberg for you? Yeah, so my highlight moment came on Saturday night at uh, about 11.30 p.m. <laughs> there was this uh, band. So they have bands playing there oh, throughout man. the day. Yeah. There's this band, Deflehem. Yeah, they're our new favorite band. They, uh, I guess. <laughs> they, uh, so they're a metal band. I guess that uh, dresses up like their knights. Yeah, their, shit. their Twitter uh, description says they're like a Dungeons and Dragons game that came to life yeah. and plays music, death, so death metal. Yeah. So you guys all wandered over there. Yep. And I was like, all right, I've had a couple drinks. Me, I'll go over there. And uh, Rob Meltzer finished half a bottle of whiskey. And uh, at one point, the lead singer puked. Is that right? Kevin? <laughs> I didn't see this. I didn't either. It was actually V Methos. Uh, Patrick. Yeah. Saw him. He puked. He had to like run off the stage. I saw him go in the bathroom. He, he didn't run off the stage. He like walked to the back of the stage, threw up <laughs> on the back of the stage, <laughs> and then just kind of like stood there for thirty seconds. I saw him like shaking his head back and forth in disbelief, and then just like slowly meandered off the stage. And then you saw him over by the bathroom, like taking off his yeah. armor, <laughs> his chainmail, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and then, and then uh, the, <laughs> the the backup singer. There's a backup vocalist for this metal band, which is, I guess, ridiculous in yeah. and of itself. We were guys were enjoying this more than I was. Yeah, but. We, were, we were trying before before this all went down. We were trying to figure out like what his role was. Like, yeah, what, I see. I can see that. Like, why is this guy like? Why is that guy just like standing around? We couldn't like see his. He's microphone not playing stand. an instrument. No, he's just kind of hanging out doing some backup vocals. He, just, he is a lower level growling. Yeah, this is like his <laughs> moment to shine. He like he, he so he was kind of dressed up like Friar Tuck, and he took his. His headpiece, he had like a hairpiece on. He took it off, and uh, he just went to town. And he was like, Raw! Yeah. the whole time. It was amazing. And uh, I think it was a highlight for me because Rob Metzler was really happy about that. He was super it's, happy. He's normally a miserable human being. Yep. <laughs> I love Rob Metzler, but he was really happy. This made his day. Yeah. Like just watching the scenario where this guy stepped up and, and got to have his moment in the sun. Yep. So it's sort of like a metaphor for Rob Metzler, who made it to the deep playoffs. <laughs> I can see why he appreciated it's that. A parallel story there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, the good news is they play Buffalo a lot, so maybe we'll be able to have him on the bro show someday. Because oh, we love do? him. Yeah. They come to oh, Buffalo? Oh, yeah. He said they're, it's their second hometown. Holy shit. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> they have their tour dates lined up for Buffalo? I don't know. Yeah. I, okay. I told them to keep us in, in, uh, in mind. So, we can... so oddly enough, that was my highlight. <laughs> I had a good time. I had yeah, fun. My was... goal was to have fun, and I did. So. Uh, outside of pinball, my highlight was the new taco place. That was pretty great. Yeah. I was a big fan of the tacos. It was a good taco place. Yeah. Thanks for opening up the taco place. I wish I could remember the name of it. All right. That was Pinberg. Many, many, many other things. We met a ton of people there that, uh, said they, they liked the show. Uh, I, when we were coming up to going up to the roof, so you could take the elevator to the roof and we're just like on the elevator talking and some guy goes, you're the voice. I'm like, I am. He goes, Oh, from the podcast, yeah. It's, it's like just like random weird stuff like that, or like I was playing in a group, and somebody's like, "Where do I recognize your voice from?" So here we go. Hello to everybody. Uh, it was a joy to meet everybody, and uh, it was cool playing with with those of you we were able to play with. And uh, look forward to next year. Awesome. All right, we got. Oh, before we move into the viewer listener Q and A, why don't we do uh, a little plug for our upcoming Papa Circuit event? I'll, I'll let you. Uh, I'll do my I'll best. Here we go. So yeah. if, if for some crazy reason you guys don't know, we got a Papa Circuit event, which is a major event. It's August 18th through 20th. It is very similar in style to Papa. Uh, we're going to have some abbreviations, but uh, Friday is going to be qualifying for the main tournament. So Saturday, there's a bank of 10 machines. You pick five of them to play on. You get unlimited entries. Entries are only a dollar a piece, so you can come up here and play a lot of pinball without breaking the bank. But there's also going to be a lot of money in there because a lot of people are coming. I think we were at past 60 people who pre-registered, which is trending higher than last year. And last year we had 100 people total. So I'm optimistic the number is going to be pretty high. Uh, we've got Classics tournaments. There's a Classics tournament on that Friday, which is separate from the Classics tournament on Saturday. So translation is there's a lot of Magic Pinball Points people. You can come up here and get a ton of pinball points. It's at Pocketeer Billiards. They have over 50 pinball machines. So uh, when you're not playing pinball, you can then go ahead and play pinball. That's important. Or, I mean, heck, check out Buffalo. It's actually uh, a pretty damn good city when it's not snowing. So yeah, since we're having it in August, you can check that out. We're only 20 minutes from Niagara Falls. Uh, we're going to have more food trucks there this year, which was a big hit last year for some people to check out some local Buffalo fare because we have awesome food in Buffalo. Food truck level up. Yeah, we like to drink and we like to eat in Buffalo, and Imagine it shows. <laughs> yep. And we also like to wear cargo shorts. We do. Um, yeah, I, I, somebody posted on Tilt Forums today that it's going to be their first time to Buffalo. They're looking forward to going to Niagara, Niagara Falls if they don't make playoffs for the Today, today so. was the cutoff, though, pre register so that's gone, I believe, yeah. right? Okay, uh, so. Midnight tonight. Midnight tonight, so... That's it. If you're watching live. But it doesn't matter. There's no cap at the amount of people that can right. play in this. So just show up. Have a good time. Yep. And uh, we hope to see you guys there. Oh, and by the way, Steve Daniels is running a tournament the night before on that Thursday. So where can they go to sign up for that, Kev? Uh, they can go to uh, – there's a Facebook event for it. If they go to the Facebook group for Buffalo Pinball and look under events, and you can find it there. Um, it's the Or just search for pre-BPSO tournament. I saw that Robert Gagno. Yeah. Signed up for it? No big deal. Okay, so he'll be out there. His mom's coming too. So. Awesome. So. All right, yeah. Kevin and I actually get to play in the Thursday tournament, which we're happy about, and yeah. we don't have to run it, so that's going to be our, our our time to shine. Any any uh, rulings you need? Any stuck balls you need? You just talk to Steve. Don't talk to us. We don't want to know about it. That's only on, on, on Thursday. You can bother us on uh, Friday, <laughs> Friday, Saturday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's right. Yep. Awesome. Um, all right, we got a whole bunch of viewer-listener feedback. Some of this I – came through last week because we were supposed to record last week so but uh the first one is an email that comes from our buddy eric s russell you may know him from the slam tilt podcast 
Uh, he said, good interview with Ryan. We had Ryan from Comet Pinball on our last episode. Um, Eric says, he had some interesting observations about earnings of different types of games relative to each other. He says, I agree with you guys on No Good Gophers 100%. I kind of want to buy one to have for a while, but I'm not sure it would be a long-term keeper. Maybe if either me or Nick end up getting one, then the other can be next in line for it. I think Walking Dead is going to be my next game, though. So, I, I can't, Thanks, Eric. I can't uh, can't disagree with the, the selection of Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, um, we got an email from Speedy Rice in chat. Well, Harry. I met down there. Yeah, I meet? met him too. Okay, cool. He he came down hoping to get snuck in on the wait list and did not happen this year. So there are people that showed up that unfortunately did not get to play. Um, but uh, he says. So partly inspired by your discussion with Ryan, I decided to jump in and order a Star Wars to put on location at a comic book shop. So we're inspiring folks to put oh, that's great. games out on that's location. That's awesome. Yeah. I saw from the stream that you guys seem kind of lukewarm on Star Wars, but I'm really hoping the game will be not too confusing for casual players or too sparse for regular players. Looking forward to hearing your reviews. I have two questions for this week. Uh, I saw you guys did a podcast on tips for buying a new box machine this, last year. But do you have any updated tips on things to watch out for when unboxing a new inbox machine? I remember the last few Sterns had issues with cabinets cracking, playfield ghosting, etc. I was wondering if there's anything else I should be on the lookout for. I think you are the man to answer this question because you've been unboxing new games for your route. Sure. So what you've been doing is putting on the brackets now. With, mm -hmm. you know, Ever since the Stern cabinets start splintering apart, uh, where the legs get attached, uh, we've been ordering the uh, metal brackets from Bally Williams um, and installing them on our game. So by, by all means do that. It's, if you're going to, especially if you're going to put a game on route, uh, I think you're going to want to do that, but you might as well do that anyways. If you're buying new Stearns, I don't know if they've solved this problem, but why even take a chance at this point? Yeah. It kind of sucks that you've got to do it, but it's better than the alternative. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think what, what we have done to it, at least with, with star Wars that we've got, we didn't do anything else. I mean, you could put in Cliffy protectors in the shooter lane to protect the shooter lane from wear, but um, sometimes the ball gets stuck on the Cliffies, and that mm -hmm. will cause more problems for the operators. So, personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it just because of that. You want your game to be as smooth playing as possible, and who cares if there's some shooter lane where it's a routed game, whatever. I mean, you can try to put some Mylar down there if you, if you want, if it bothers you that much. That might be kind of the the happy medium with that. Um, but that's all we've really done. You know, yeah. just make sure you, you, you put a coat of wax on it before you send it out there for play. And, um, you know, Stern's been good about putting uh, protection in their scoops. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been good about having the magnet core size be bigger. So a lot of issues that you had to do before, you don't have to do anymore. Um, if I can think of anything else, I'll let you know. But it um, should be good to go, man. Yeah, his second question kind of is similar to that. He's, he wants the tips on how to location-proof a game. Uh, he says, I grabbed a set of lollipop rails to protect the sides, but is there anything else I should be doing to prep the game for location? I also grabbed a dollar bill acceptor and a pay range unit. That sounds like you're good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, I don't think you really need to do anything else unless, you know, it, it might be game-specific. Uh, mm. Pay attention to the game when it comes out. Go on maybe the, the forums on Pinside and just see what issues people might be having especially when you get a new game like Star Wars, right, that's only been out for a few weeks at this point, and people are, are discovering maybe what problems exist, if any, on it. Like an and exploding it, TIE fighter, maybe? Right, and then you can get out ahead of it, right? You know, <laughs> if there, there are fixes. So that's the one sort of downside of, of operating a game that just came out. You don't really know what the problems are, and you can't anticipate them, but, you know, if you buy a game that's been out for a year or two, uh, you can be better prepared. But it's going to be game-specific. Okay, moving on to questions from Twitter. From G what? I would yeah, uh, maybe maybe sometimes one last thing. Maybe put better balls than the ones that Stern sends. It's a good idea. So get the Uso Super Shiny from um, Pinball Life or something. Yep. So highly recommend something it. there. Um, so questions from Twitter. The first one's from Jarek Zero. He says, "Kevin, how reliable is your space shuttle? Might have to get one as my first pin, but I know absolutely nothing about repairs. A little worried. Thanks." Um, so space shuttle, there's not a whole lot to go wrong on it. If it's working, I mean, there's no like super complicated mechanisms or, you know, it's, it's scoops and, and targets and drop targets and pop bumpers and rollover switches. So, uh, if you can maintain those and if you own a pinball machine, you're going to learn how to maintain those eventually. Um, the, uh, the game has been great. Uh, I got mine with, it had some issues with uh, the power board, so I just got a new power board and put it in there, and it's been running great ever since. 
knock on wood, it's been it's been running great, no problem. So it, it's one of my most reliable machines. I'd say go for it. And uh, to add to that, I mean, you're gonna have to learn to repair no matter what machine. Mm-hmm. It's gonna break at some point, so you're gonna have to either learn how to repair the machine or have do what friend. I do: <laughs> make a bunch of friends who uh, will be willing to help you out when they do break. So. <laughs> Uh, just prepare for that day. It's going to break. It could break the very next day you get it. Yep. Because just just pinball, right? Sometimes just moving them around. Yeah. It, or it could last for years. But mm-hmm. at some point, you're going to have to. So um, start figuring out now You know what you might need to know. Um, get the, some of the basic tools, soldering iron, solder, uh, mm-hmm. things like that. Start watching some videos, finding your level of comfort, or again, finding somebody who's willing to step in and, and, and fix the game for you if there is a problem. So you don't you know, have a game that's down forever and then start hitting the hobby. Yep, you're firing a metal ball around inside a box and stuff is going to break. Uh, all right, second question is from TurboGrafx7. He says, with the Stern Pro Tour, do you think Stern will start making games more geared for tournament play? Um, I think they've kind of been doing that, I would say, ever since like ACDC, especially with like Lyman Sheets at the helm of the code, you know, a competitive tournament player. Uh, a lot of their games are, are really already um, on that way. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I see I, that's the direction it's going in. So it's well received that risk reward um, and multiple paths to victory. I mm-hmm. think maybe that's what you mean by tournament play, right? Mm-hmm. So there's not just one way to play the game. So yep. but there's this way a lot of maybe Bally Williams games are, and it's a little boring. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they just do it just for tournament play or because I think collectors like it as well. But certainly that's the direction that they have been going in since, as Kevin mentioned, ACDC for pretty much all the games that have been coming out. Yeah. Um, some more than others. Some have more risk reward, and it really depends on who the designer is of, um, of the rules. But they're all sort of going that way. Yeah. I was, I was going to say like they're starting to get more balanced scoring, but then I thought about Star Wars and how ridiculous the scoring is on that game. So. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't. I don't think the either way. I don't think the Stern Pro Tour is going to have any impact on how they program games. Well, they like, fixed. I mean, they fixed it in the um, update. Like the stupid bonus is gone. Okay. Right? So like we saw games when during the launch party of that when people were playing. Typically, if they played longer, they did better, okay. right? It, and there wasn't such separation or, or things that make sense. So it, it is getting that way. Okay, that's good. I but, mean, you still, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's like, the, the games like uh, like Ghostbusters. You can, you, one person can get like five billion, and the other person can get like ten thousand. You know? It's, yeah. I mean, that's that's <laughs> that's the, the, what they're. I guess Dwight's doing right. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh. From the Rudy Soup, he wants to know sugar plain or waffle cone for your ice cream. Waffle. That's the only answer. Waffle cone. All right. <laughs> we had one question from our Discord channel from Attack seventy seven seventy seven. Uh, he says, "What games? Well, so this is this is." We'll have to kind of do this in retrospect because he asked, what games are you most looking forward to at Pinberg that you either haven't tried yet or haven't had much time on? And we'll be curious to hear if they lived up to your expectations after. Um, did you have anything you were looking forward to, especially playing at Pinberg? Uh, no, which is weird. I mean, I, I guess I've been going to Pinberg. That was my seventh one. Mm. You know, I've been going to the Pop Facility in Pinberg every, you know, twice a year for six, seven years now. So I've played a lot of them. Yeah. I found when I was down there, the game that I most went to and played in my free time was Aerosmith Premium. I really want that game. So yep. I'm going to get, I've decided I'm going to get that game. It's just a matter of when. It might be a year or a year and a half then I can actually afford it. But that's what I really like. Yep. Um, Rudy Soup in chat says Torpedo Alley. Absolutely. That game was great. But the, the, the game that was top on my list when I was heading down to Pinburg and I was ta- talking to Steve Daniels about this, it was um, Motor Show. Did he get a chance to play Motor Show? Motor Show is a, a 1989 game from a company called Mr. Game out of Italy. It has a CRT monitor in the back glass. And oh, it's I've got seen like those, that. those triggers. Yeah, I've seen that. But it was actually working and they had it in the tournament. They had in the tournament. Yeah, oh, it okay. was in one of the banks. I was like, man, I really want to get drawn for that bank. I didn't get the, drawn for the bank, but... Um, Steve and I on Saturday we went went over uh, because I, I had to buy into the second round of the playoffs so we were just kind of walking around and wandering and playing games and I said we got to go play motor show so we played motor show it lived up to expectations it was amazing and cheesy and playing with the the gun handles was weird and there was a like a race car video mode in it um, so yeah if if you ever go to Pinburg and that game's working definitely try motor show because you're never going to play that anywhere else Cool. Um, all right, that does it for our viewer questions. So let's move into 
review time. Which one should we review first? Let's do. Well, oh, well, come on. We got to do Bram Stoker Dracula first. Oh, Let's okay. go in chronological, chronological order. All right. Plus, okay. people are waiting to hear about Star Wars. All right. You got to say the best, best, so, best for last. This one, Bram Stoker's Dracula review, is 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 brought to you by the our our, our Patreon supporters who are at the five dollar or more level. Uh, we want to thank them for their support. We want to thank everybody for their support on Patreon. Um, it's just another way to to help us out. And and Patreon is, I think, more geared to the podcast uh, because uh, uh, I, guess, I guess the more traditional way to support us is on Twitch is through the Twitch mechanism, subbing, through yeah. bits and subbing. So that's why that exists. So thank you, guys. And, and one way to, to, to thank you for that support um, is to let you guys choose which game we review every month. And this month we offered up Bram Stoker's Dracula. That, that had always been kind of floating out there. Yeah. It just wasn't chosen. And then X Men was mm-hmm. the other game, right? Yep. I think it was just those two. Yep. They've asked for dialed in, but we're not going to review that. We've just said a million times. Kevin and I are <laughs> we bought one, so that's how we feel <laughs> about good. it, right? Yeah, right? buy one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. Bram Stoker's Dracula one, and we're going to review that. So thank you guys. So I had to, I had to. Inc- we don't normally include uh, flyers with our our reviews, but I had to throw this one in there because just because it's so amazing. It's a uh, it's a pinball machine in a coffin because it's Dracula. So. Uh, it's Dra- a cool flyer. By the way. <laughs> it's pretty I, I great. Appreciate it. Um, Dracula was an early '90s uh, Belly Williams game, uh, designed by Barry Ausler, and um, it's it's kind of one of the it has to be one of the hardest, most brutal games out there. Uh, but like, I find it to be super satisfying once you get into it. But um, let's start by talking about the art. Um, the art is it's got a very blue look to it. Um, let's see. There you go. There's the cabinet. A uh, lot of blue, red with the Dracula name, as you would expect. It's got, you know, actors on the on the back box, but they're they're it's not photo it's not photos of them. They're drawn, I think. So this is because obviously this is based on the movie from I believe it was 1992. Yeah. Um. Again, on the playfield, very blue, kind of like castle looking playfield. Um. Characters. I don't know what's going on there, but there's some action on the play. That's from the movie, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's 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 getting into what's going love, on man. there. Yeah, it's love. about that's well, that's the direction the movie went in. So love never dies, bro. Yeah. Um, and then you got uh, you got Ron Jeremy in a coffin up there, so it's all good. Um, yeah. It, what I like the uh, the kind of like molded plastics and stuff that are around. That's the, cool. Uh, it's a nice touch. Yeah, the, on the sides and stuff. It really kind of fills out the play field and. And makes it look cool. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think of the art overall? I dig it. I mean, I, I'm for whatever reason, I'm partial to games that have like a lot of blue in it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> it's so simple. My God, you put blue in a game, and suddenly I'm like, ah, it's pretty good art. Uh, I, I like it. It's, I think it just encapsulates the feeling of the game, and, and it's what I expect from Dracula. Um, probably the least part that I like about it is the backlash. It's not bad. Yeah. It's just when you put a bunch of actors on the backlash. It's not something I get excited over, but it's not, it's 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 solid. It, it's good. Yeah, uh, I, I yeah, it's not it's not one of my favorites, but I do like the kind of atmosphere it sets. Um, yeah, and, it does accomplish that. Yeah, it's got the vibe of it all. I would have almost like preferred maybe the clean look of the um, maybe like the movie box or like it was just like the the Dracula letters and I think it's like kind of gray behind it. Yeah, that was it's cool. Just kind of clean. That. It's yeah. just there's something clean about it and. Because there's always a lot going on in pinball, and I think it doesn't hurt to have so we're just like a clean look at some point on it. But that's just again that comes down to preference. Yep. It's not it's not a bad backlash by any stretch of the imagination. Yep. Um, so that is art. Um, sound. Thirty million, right? <laughs> that's what it's, it's all about. Those callouts in the, in Dracula, but it's got it's got kind of eerie organ music. Yeah, feel to it's it. sort of ap- ap- atmospheric is the music that kind of goes on and, and what's cool about it is it, it sort of lingers in the background, mm-hmm. um, which is, again, it draws you into the game. And it's, I think this is really good decision-making for when it came out in the early nineties, mm-hmm. sort of eerie lingers on the back of the game. It's got the voice of Dracula in there at certain moments. Mm-hmm. Um, but it gets louder at, at certain parts of the game. Yeah, it, it, it amps up the better you're doing or in key moments. Like when you hear the coffin open or mm-hmm. Dracula laughing, like he's like, mm, 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 and the balls like right? dropping the coffin. It's like, boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. It's got, I don't know, man, as we're talking about the sound, it's got a really good sound. Yeah. I think it nails the theme perfectly. Yeah. I love the sound on it. Um, toys. Uh, we kind of saw those earlier, but we can, we can pop them back. And no Keanu Reeves. No Keanu Reeves. You can get them if you get prototype. I think he's on the slings. I would love it if they did a John Wick 
pinball uh, machine. I just thought of that now. <laughs> there but you yeah, go. Anyways. Yeah, I think the prototype slingshot plastics have uh, Keanu Reeves on there. So if you really need Keanu in your uh, Dracula, you can get those. Um, but the main, it's got, it doesn't really have interactive toys. It's got like, yeah, it does. It, well, it's got yeah, the it does, coffin, Kevin. But, Kevin. What? People are losing their minds right now. What? It's got one of the best interactive toys in all pinball. What is it? The magnet. Oh. The ball. The mist. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at like stuff on the play field. You're fixated on Ron Jeremy. Yeah, and, uh, he's distracting. In a uh, glass case, like a life, like those things <laughs> yeah. where they preserve the body. <laughs> yeah. The, the Miss Multi Ball is awesome. Um, so, yeah, if you've never seen that. <laughs> Ron it, Jeremy in the box. I, know, I can't stop looking at him now. I gotta, yeah, I okay. Make gotta, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you've never seen Miss Multi Ball, it's um, it's automatically lit on ball three out of with um with standard play field settings, or you can you can qualify it. But uh, if you plunk the ball into the the hole on the left side of the play field, uh, a ball will travel across the play field on a magnet, and you have to like knock it off of the um off of the magnet with the other ball. And sometimes it doesn't quite work, and they both get stuck, and then you're screwed. Sometimes um, I'd say nine times out of ten, it does it it, it works out. But yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's great. Um, it's a big, I loved when I, I had this in my collection cause I was borrowing it for like three years from, uh, I was babysitting <laughs> for like three years. It was and your I, uh, revenge for Mars. And I love like the moment when somebody who's like never seen the game before or never played it or maybe new to mm-hmm. pinball, I just kind of wait by the game for that moment <laughs> to happen. And they're just, you see their eyes light up. They're like, what's Whoa. going on? Yeah. It's, it's really cool. I mean, to this day the, the game is what, 25 years old mm-hmm. uh, thereabouts and it's one of the best i think toys in a pinball machine right um such a cool moment and again they really did a good job with the with the theme and, mm-hmm. and having that mist element so as, very cool as fugel says how do they work those magnets <laughs> the miracles it's a, it is a miracle <laughs> it's a miracle in a box all right dmd and lighting what do you think uh yeah, again, there's a, kind of that that flick. I think they sort of flicker the the GI sometimes, yeah. um, in in a good way mm-hmm. because it's set like the the tone of like uh, a candles burning kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, it's a darker game, but I'm I like that because it, again, it, it hits the theme of it. So they've they've done a great job. Very impressive for a game that came out in the early '90s. Yeah, and this DMD wise, this game it has like a typical orange DMD on it, but it's got a filter on it. Out of you know from factory that makes it look red, which is obviously appropriate for a Dracula game. They do you can get a uh, color DMD for it, but um, you know, like you look, I think kind of like you think with Walking Dead, it's like it fits the theme. So I don't think you really need a color uh, so, DMD. Yeah, I don't think you need a color DMD in that game because the red is perfect, right? Yeah. I don't think I think a color DMD in the, that game will just make it cartoony. Yeah, and I don't think you want that cartoony vibe when something's really dark. Um, you know, and the whole thing is like red and blood, right? Mm-hmm. So. Great as is. When, uh, 2084 in chat says, when my son, six years old, said saw the Miss Multiball, he said, look, Dracula himself is controlling the ball. That's awesome. It's pretty badass. So get yeah, that man. reaction out of somebody, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a cool trick. It's great. It's I still appreciate Mist, multi, um, the Mist. I yeah. still appreciate that toy. That's how good it is. It's mm-hmm. not just like this this gimmick, necessarily. It's something cool because you can interact with it. Yep. Anyways. Cool. Uh, gameplay. Um so I'll let you speak to this. You had the game in your collection a long time. What do you What do you think? Uh, the gameplay. It's how do we get? I mean, this is this is gameplay, and it bleeds into rules. Um, it's a tough game, and I like that as a player. It has lightning flippers on it. Uh, standard. If you play a game, uh, Dracula doesn't have lightning flippers on it. Talk to the owner and say what WTF? You're cheating. Um, Tell me he's cheating. He it's, or, it's he a or tough, she's cheating. It's a tough game. Just accept that it's a tough game, and that's the beauty of it because. It makes you want to play more. I think it's like it's a one more game type of thing. Um, the ramps are smooth. Mm-hmm. You tend to use, you know, there's, there's. I'm trying to think how many shots. There's one, two, three, four, really. Yeah. And then miss. There's not a lot of shots in the game that you utilize, mm-hmm. and a lot of times you're just maybe hitting a couple of them. So yeah. it's a little limited. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's when you get into the criticism. It's a little limited. You're not using up a lot of real estate. You're not using up a lot of shots. Um, but the ones that are there, they feel very satisfying and you can certainly get into kind of a flow of it. But then when you miss the game, like be ready to react, oh, you miss a shot, be ready to react because it's probably going to be a drain. Yeah. Um, so especially if you hit that center target bang, it's like, you're dead. Yeah. It's, it's sort of Borg esque in that way. Right. You know, he's got some flow, but then there's other things that will just, just destroy you in that. 
The center target bank you never go for. That's the interesting right. thing. It's, it's just there. It's but there to kill you, basically. It's like I, I almost look at it like a wall. Yeah. Um, that's sort of non-existent because you don't you don't want to go after it. So. Yep. Um, sort of limited in game gameplay wise, but what's there is good, and what you you do hit feels good. Yeah, and it's got the uh, the video mode, one of the best video modes in in pinball. The uh, um, the, where the werewolves are coming at you, and you got to fire them off. Definitely, I like when you had it. You had it on the hardest setting, and they come at you super fast. So yeah. that's that's the way to have it. I, I think. yeah yeah definitely. The I don't like video modes. I just want to play pinball. Mm-hmm. I don't want to play a video game for twenty five years ago with with two buttons. Right? It's kind of it's kind of stupid. But if I'm going to play one, that's actually a, a pretty decent one. Mm-hmm. And as Kevin said, set it to the hardest setting because they come super fast. Yep. Otherwise, and it's boring. Like, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, and you're, and you're over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, in that mode, it lasts like five seconds, yep. right? And you're, you're back to playing pinball. And in Dracula, it's almost a nice breather because mm-hmm. that game's so damn brutal. You're, yeah, you're like, Phew. you're not going to be too upset that you're playing a, a video mode. I get to not die for a little bit. Yep. All right. So, rules. The rules on this game, it's all about stacking the multi balls, right? Yeah, that's all this too. So there's no wizard mode in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, it's a little bit limited uh, on the rules because of that mm. compared to other games that, in the 90s. And this is sort of the, the transition point where they are adding wizard modes to uh, pinball machines. But the objective of that is you want to stack multi-balls. And there's three multi-balls in the game. And as you bring in you know, uh, two multi-balls, now the jackpots are 20 million. And if you get all three going... You get this awesome, nice 30 million call out by oh, Dracula yeah. himself. He really, I, I'm not going to do it. I will spare everybody that. <laughs> but it gets super loud. It's just this great moment where you're like, this is, that, that pretty much is the wizard mode of, of, of setting that up and pulling that off. Yep. That's, and that's, it's not easy to achieve. So it's one of those games that I, feel, I kind of feel it's Walking Dead esque in that way is when, when you get everything lined up and you can just blow it up. That's, it just feels so great. So, um, that's what. That's why this is a game that that people stick with and continue to want in their collections. I think. Yep. Because it's tough, but but when it's very satisfying when you do the thing. Uh, last ability. So you had it for three years. What? Do you, how do you feel it stays on the last ability scale? I think it, it it fares pretty well on the last ability scale because it, it is a tough game and tough games will keep you coming back for more and and trying to kind of conquer it. You know, getting. Um, all three multi balls going is not an easy task, and even after you've done it, you're going to want to do it again. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you're kind of chase that, and, it, and it's also great for competition. I mean, a lot of competitive pinball, you'll see Dracula in there. Uh, there's there's a couple of ways to approach the game, which is kind of cool, or, or trying to chase the three multi balls. Mm-hmm. Um, with that said, you know there isn't a wizard mode. The rules are pretty basic. So at, after three years, I don't. I don't feel like I need to have that game any longer in my collection. I thought three years was more than enough time. You know, maybe I, I only played it a lot for like a year or a year and a half or something like that. And I, and, and I have a lot of respect for the game, but it's not, um, at least in, in my book, something that needs to be in the collection and they need to have forever. Right. right. Yep. Um, I, I would agree. I, I didn't, I've never owned it, but every time I would go to your house, I really enjoyed playing it. So it's, it wasn't one of those games where I was like, ah, I've played that, but it's like, uh, I want to see if I can get the three multi balls again, you know? So it kept me coming back and I could see it being good in a collection of, of a few games at least. Yeah. You're going to want that game in a larger collection. I think it's, it's a, it's a great game to have in a larger collection. And I'm always down to play, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. So, you know, I'm not, and I don't always feel that about a lot of pinball Mm -hmm. machines, you know? we had that Kevin said you want to play it absolutely it's it's a yes all day the nice thing is it doesn't the the turns are short so you can play a four-player game of Dracula and then say let's do it again right and and sort of chase that um three ball multi-ball it's good it's 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 got solid last ability all right so let's move into our uh our ratings let's go over the the rating system for for those of you who may be new um so we we rate our games on a scale of zero to ten Hopefully we don't ever have any zeros, but I won't rank it. I won't count it out. Uh, for, but from zero to two is a burn it. Uh, three to five is an expensive nightlight. Six to eight is a solid game. And nine to ten, you should run out and drop a whole bunch of money and buy it. So for you, where does Bram Stoker's Dracula fall on that so scale? As, as I alluded to earlier, I, I, I've had it. I didn't buy it. It's not a keeper forever. So it's not in the nine to ten range, which is reserved for very few games. I think we've only given a, a couple games that. Yep. At least I have. Mm-hmm. Um, with that said... Uh, it's a very impressive game. It nails the theme. It sounds great. It's challenging. It's fun. Uh, it's a solid. It's a solid game, and I would put that on the high side, all the way up to eight point five for Bram Stoker's Dracula. So very impressive that the game came out in the early '90s and, and can still capture uh, my interest better than some games that you know have come out in the last few years. 
Nice. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna put it at a seven and a half. I think that it's it's a good solid game. Um uh, fun to play, keeps you coming back. Uh not the deepest rule set, but what's there is is super fun. So uh highly recommend it if you if you uh have an interest in the game, uh, I would recommend buying it. So. And we don't get into price much. You know, I mean, the, yeah. we try to rate the game how it is because it changes. And, it, you know, you it might used be listening. To, it used to be like Dracula all day, right? Yeah. Because it was like eighteen hundred dollars or less, and now they're at three something. Around something, three, yeah, something crazy. I think that's yeah. too much for that game in, in terms of where I would get. If it was back in pricing, where it was like a under two thousand dollar DMD game, it would be one of the games that we recommend mm-hmm. to get. Yep. Um, I think it's a little bit limited when you start getting into $3,000 because there's other games that just have more depth to them, more shots to them, more rules to them that um, I would put them in my collection before Dracula. So Yeah, you start looking at like it's, like early 2000s Sterns and stuff like that and that that price range. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. it's worth bringing up the price um, because people had like uh, – there's there's been a love affair with Bram Stoker's Dracula. I think it's people have gotten better at pinball. And yeah. the, that was like the it game for a while and mm-hmm. might be cooling down a little bit. But um, yeah, it's worth mentioning. Oh, absolutely. All right, let's piss some people off and talk about Star Wars. Boom. Actually, Star I, don't Wars will. I don't know if we will. I don't know if we will. I don't know. I don't know what Maybe you think of the Maybe people will agree with us. Yeah. I don't know. So uh, Stern released Star Wars Pinball just uh, a month or so ago. Um, comes to you in three forms, as you should know by now. Stern releases a Pro, a Premium, and an LE. The Pro has been out and around, and folks have been getting their hands on it. They're just starting to talk about the... The LE and the premium starting to show that off. I, I think I saw somebody in chat mention there's one in, in Europe probably on test now or something like that. Um, but we haven't seen much of that. So this review is going to be of the Pro. We've both played it. Um, there's a few on location here in Buffalo. So if you haven't had a chance to play it, uh, we're going to hopefully uh, give you some insight into that. So th- these are the two play fields here that I'm going to show on the screen. And uh, we'll kind of get into talking about art. So go ahead. <laughs> Me? Yeah. I got to do it for I got to take the plunge. I mean, uh, I'll talk about I'll, no, I'll, I'll, no, Kevin, let me. Uh, I was going to let you talk about rules. <laughs> <laughs> do what you got to do. All right. So, yeah, this the art it looks better in person as everybody says that. They're like, "Well, it looks better in person." We well, know yeah, that, we, we know that by now. It's got right? lighting and the the effects and everything looks cooler when it's when it's lit up and you're playing it and thing the the kind of choreography and stuff is going on, but I just cannot get over the fact that this looks like a Sega game. You know, it's like, and it's a, it's a, it's a great theme. Star Wars is awesome. They have so many assets and like some, how many people, how many artists do Star Wars art? There has to be thousands. And this is what they come up with. It's just, just so, so disappointing. Once you get into playing it, you don't really pay attention to it because it's so fast but that's not the point the point is is the art good and i don't think the art is good see i'm i'm actually i'm I'm surprised because when i saw the pictures i was like this was like trash i think it just it, it did not look good to me at all and looked phoned in and in playing the game and seeing the game i think i've warmed up to a bit i, I a lot of times we say uh the art gets the job done mm-hmm. i think it goes a little step above getting the job done i think it's the art, art is actually pretty good Pretty decent. Pretty maybe maybe the art is is up to good. It's not great. It's not amazing, but it's it's good. I'm and I'm talking about the play field primarily right now. Um, I think about other Stern games that that people have and like Tron. I think the art's garbage on it, to yeah. be honest. And I don't think we talk about that enough because we just are in love with Tron and ACDC. I think the art's it's garbage on bad. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think the art's garbage on on. Game of Thrones. I think on Star Wars it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 pretty good. I'm, I'm, Look at all I'm, those X's and tell me it's good. <laughs> you've seen X Files. <laughs> I uh, it's it's I I'm 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 I, I'm more warm on the art than Kevin is, and I think the backlash is good. I do like the uh, the cabinet and backlash art. The, yeah. the Playfield art is disappointing. The cabinet and backlash art is nice. The the thing I don't like about it though is like they have like it's all different. Like all the sides, it's just like. They came up with six different playfield or art cabinet art designs and they just slapped them all in random order on different machines and there's like no consistency throughout uh, the whole package, which is kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, it's it's hand drawn in the fact that it's it's like painted and it's not custom made for a pinball machine, but it is nice looking. Maybe like see, I'm not a Star Wars fan, so maybe I'm just like, yeah, this looks like Star Wars to mm, me. You know, like yeah. maybe so maybe a fan would like really look in the end. Uh, 
You know, I can think of like so many other examples where like I've the seen, art in this book or the art in this board game or, or something like that yeah. is so much better. I saw somebody commenting like that they have like this picture. There's a a piece of the art that where it shows uh, Luke Skywalker and it's like the same picture of Luke Skywalker they use on eight thousand different things. So it's yeah, like, but, but that's just because <laughs> Star Wars is everywhere. Yeah. And it's, I I don't know. I think it's I I think it's better than some of the other. Uh, garbage art pieces that they put out. Yeah, um, I might even go. It's as better far than as Game Sega. of Thrones. I'll give you that. It's better than it's better than <laughs> Sega stuff, yeah. though. Yeah. But you're seeing those X's and it's yeah. driving you crazy. It's, it's driving me nuts. The other thing, and we'll get into this when we talk about the display, is the the, the typography on the on the uh, LCD screen. It's just like so bad. <laughs> well, that's a different story. So, um, DMD. We'll, yeah. We'll get to that. That's we'll, we'll, that's. We'll get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's talk about sound. Um. Why don't you kick this one off? Um, this sounds like Star Wars. I guess the, yeah, it's got the Star and Wars beeps. music. I think it could use more callouts, like the like. Why not get Mark? People are saying why not get Mark Hamill? Yeah, right to do like the callouts, the jackpots, or, or narrating. You gotta have somebody saying what's going on. Mm-hmm. That game is fucking confusing. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I went this far without swearing, but it's just like in a game that's just that crazy and confusing. We we gotta have more. Maybe we'll see more coming. It's I get it. It's early, but whatever. This is. You review video games when they come out, even before yep. they get released. This is what's there right now. And I wish they got a better uh, uh, voiceover. I guess they got a guy from the Clone Wars or something. The is that who that is? Something. He, there, he is related to okay. Star Wars, but yeah. nobody, no, you know, like you wouldn't know that. Why not get Mark Hamill? Why not get C3? Somebody. Yeah. C3. Somebody. <laughs> he sounds like, the announcer sounds like a bad uh, Admiral Akbar. Usually I love sound in Stern games, but this is just sort of like, it gets the job done. I guess, yeah. It's like they put all the Star Wars stuff in it, and then it just does all the Star Wars stuff all the time. So, too early to call for ratings. Well, it's- pinball was how long do you give a company before you rate? Why is why is pinball different than a car that comes out and you can buy? Why is pinball different than a video game that comes out and you can yeah. buy or a movie? Yeah. They're like, oh, we're not done with the movie. We're gonna have the directors cut in two years, and that's gonna be. <laughs> don't rate it. Don't rate it. Just just go out and buy it. Just. No, it's not. They're like, taking money. You got to. I don't know of yep. any other thing that you put out a product and you're not supposed to rate it. Yeah. Um, when you're taking money. Yep. So yeah. So that's why we, you know. So and I, you, I think we were too charitable before in the past. Yeah. No, and it, they, it comes put, out. We rate it. They've put out what two or three code releases yeah. since it came out already. So, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give it a, we're gonna give it a number. Yeah. All right. Toys. They could have done better on the sound though. Especially the narration of voiceover. One thing I do really like is in the attract mode when it like goes into like the the intro of the the Star Wars oh, movies yeah. and it's got like the scrolling text. It makes on the people screen. happy. Yeah, it's cool. You hear it's that just music? Like, oh man, that's cool. Like it was when I walked into uh, Game On the first time. That was just like it was uh, in attract mode and going. On. I was like, okay, cool. All right, that's pretty cool. I'll give you that. Um, toys. There aren't any. Next. Uh, <laughs> oh wait, no. It's got a it's got a bobbly uh, Tie Fighter. I think that's like what is the most one of the most disappointing things. It's just it looks. I feel like if I say Zizzle, it gets played out, but it's just so barren. There's really no toy in the game yeah. on the pro. There really isn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Tie Fighter on like the spring that I guess a coil shakes a little bit. All right, it's it's. it's I, I was saying this to Kevin before. If that was like the secondary toy and you had a primary toy. Then I'd be like, oh, that's cool. You know, I'd shrug my shoulders. Oh, it's nice to have. Mm-hmm. But when that's the only toy on the Pro, it's kind of weak. Let's yeah. compare it to another game. Let's compare it to Aerosmith. Yeah. Awesome painted toy. Same opens price. up. Ball flies through there. No, it's actually $100 cheaper oh. from a distributor. Silly me. Silly me. Um, Come on, man. Toys are important. Yeah. Toys are important. There's nothing cool about the Pro. And as some I, I, somebody was saying, like um, in Pinside, they could have done so many cool things with like the idea of the force and magnets. Mm-hmm. And I know magnets get magnets get used a lot, okay. But this is theme appropriate, where you can have like Darth Vader like grabbing the ball and like firing it or taking yeah. it away from you. Yeah, you know something. <laughs> they would have made far more sense than even Ghostbusters. I yep. know ghosts are manipulating, but like. Where is you've got this rich history of Star Wars. You've got all these you got three films to work from and cool moments. And the toy in the fucking pro is a little uh, TIE fighter from Walmart that vibrates a little bit and falls apart. It's a little weak. Uh Acker Apple in chat says Death Star not a primary toy. No, because you don't there's no interaction with it on the pro. Yeah, there's no interaction. It just sits there and in certain modes there's like six LEDs that light up on it. As Pimbo was B says they become decorations at this point. Yes. It's, it's a decoration, very true. yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, uh, the 
um, Death Star on the Pro does not qualify as a toy. Sorry, yeah, it's just like a, a play field. It, it's it's equivalent to the molded plastics like we saw on Bram Stoker's Dracula, and I, I can I can show some Star Wars. We have yet to you. see so the hyperdrive toy on the premium and the Yelly. We have yet to see what that is. Uh, I guess what it's supposed to be like is the um, so that's the that's the Le version of the. Um, yeah, the Death Star. The hyperdrive is supposed to be like in, in the getaway. What is it called? Yeah, um, the I can't think of the, the whippy ball thing. Yeah, yeah, the whippy ball <laughs> thing. Technical, technical term. Yeah, uh, from people who've been playing pinball for the yep. last few days and are, are losing their minds right now. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know if that's going to make it better. I don't know if you can really interact with it too. So supercharger. Thank you, pinball. Supercharger. Is. Thank you. Oh God, <laughs> we're, we're getting there. We're almost made it. Uh, yeah. So. That's that's all you get for toys. Oh, I need to uh, switch my things. I'm I'm forgetting how to operate things. Toys. Oh, all DMD. Right. DMD. <laughs> Lighting's great. Let me just kind yeah. of say something positive right mm-hmm. now. Yes, lighting please. is really good. Yep. I feel like they they, I mean the pro lighting is sort of where the premium has been for a number of years. Yeah. I mean, premium might be better, but like there's a lot of great lighting moments in that pro, and I think that's what's sort of carrying the game mm-hmm. in some ways. Whereas um, we're not getting a cool toy, but the lighting on a pro is something special now. Yeah, it brought which, back the RGB LED lighting on the on the pro, which is cool. Yeah, which to be honest helps. I mean, it, it makes the game look a lot better um, when you see the lighting effects. They're they're not up to sort of Jersey Jack, but you know, for a fifty four hundred dollar game, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, and Dwight does a really good job of like getting the choreography right and, yeah. and setting the pace and, and and the mood and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, lighting's good. DMD, however, it's not a DMD. It's a it's a LCD now. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's it's pretty. There's a lot on it all the time, and it's just just poorly executed. It's the, like the font looks like something that I could do at work. Yeah, it's a, not they just like type designer. some crap in in Arial, and they're like, "That's good." That's what that's where they're really like. Maybe in, in five years from now, we're gonna be like, "Oh my god!" You remember the LCD screen on the early Sterns when mm-hmm. they came out with the spike? Maybe that's what's going on, but it's just it's really lagging behind yep. what uh, JJP is doing. Again, there's a big price difference well, yeah, uh, on the absolutely. Pro, but the premium, premium and, and LE, you're LE right there. Are right there. Yeah. yeah, I think they need to get their act together on the um, the LCD screen and utilize it. It's early, yeah, and they're, and they're just kind of getting into that field, but it's weak. Yeah, I think of the three games that have come out, Aerosmith definitely has the best looking uh, LCD screen from Stern, uh, and they had you know. Um, the guy that did uh, home movies, he did the all the the cartoons and stuff like that for for the screen. So that's why it looks good. Somebody was saying like that, like, like, like first of all, contract out, right? If you can't right, do it in house, exactly. They were saying like the the clips, and it looked like um, the teaser clips and like a DVD when you're at the DVD menu, <laughs> yeah, or something like yeah. that. It's <laughs> just <laughs> it's, Wildcat says 1990s CD-ROM game caliber graphics. <laughs> it's not good, man. Yeah. It's not. And it's got Good. like so they they have there's some cool elements to it like I like the concept of like being in the cockpit of the of the uh, Millennium Falcon or whatever but it's just like the static thing on the screen and then the Tie Fighters come in and they just kind of wobble around it's like a still picture of a of a Tie Fighter that they just move back and forth on the screen it's not actually animated. Well, be honest though, I mean having an LCD, I, I'm really glad they didn't jack up the price crazy when the LCD came out. So yeah. that that's a lot more work for them to do for a single pinball machine. They're releasing a number of pinball machines throughout the year. So, you know, you're sort of hard here because you're comparing it to other things and you know it can be better. I oh, guess yeah. they're simple things. Mm-hmm. But it is a welcome change to have the LC- the LCD is better than DMD. No, Absolutely. no doubt. Yes, thank you. And the upgrade in price, a few hundred dollars, I would do that all day. Yeah, it was basically the price of if you were going to buy a, a, a color DMD and put it in your game. It's just coming with it now. Yeah. Um, but but it, it also has the little LCD on the play field too. Uh, kind of like um, Jersey Jack has been doing, which and it gives you instructions during the, um, the during the game, which I like because uh, with the LCD, I think we're reaching a point where it's like, okay, we can present everything that's happening in the machine to the player at all times, but what should we show the player? Do we show them everything? Which kind is kind of like what's happening with Star Wars. They're like everything's on the screen at all times. I've got a little thing that shows me how many Tie Fighters I got. I got five modes running. I've got all this progress towards multi ball or whatever, and it's all showing up on the screen. Um, the the little on 
on play field screen kind of narrows that down a little bit for you and and shows you you know for the mode this is what you need to hit and um of course the the play field lighting helps with that as well but you know and and also taking that moment to defend the uh the lcd screen Mm -hmm. again you said it the aerosmith one just blows it away yeah i was just watching again at pinburg i'm just watching a little bit more i was like wow this is so good yep this they do such a good job that's why i'm gonna go and, and buy that game because it looks great. The entire package, the art looks good. The LCD looks good. And it's clever, like the sweet, sassy, frassy truck and stuff like yeah. that. And, you know? there's, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's, it's cool. There's, it's, it's, it's like there's some passion behind it. There's, yeah. there's some art. You can see some real artists worked on this. Some creativity, they yeah. They just like, and with Star Wars, it like, they just threw it on there. Done. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And the thing that, so yeah, we talked earlier about, yeah, there's going to be code updates, but, but CERN's cranking out games so fast that like, this is what you're getting. They're not gonna like redo the mm-hmm. whole display. They uh, might they might polish it up it. a little bit, but this yeah. is this is what you're getting. Um, yeah, that's DMD and lighting gameplay. You've played it more than I have, but I'll say this as far as gameplay. Like, I had like it was just like I saw the play field and it was kind of like whatever. It's a Steve Ritchie game, and the artwork. I was kind of I didn't have a whole lot of high hopes going into it. But after playing it, I really, really liked it. Um, at least the first time I played it, um, I was like, "Oh, this is fast! This is awesome!" Second time around, not so much. It was uh, not quite as exciting. I didn't leave wanting to get back to it as much uh, after I played it a second time. Um, I don't know. What do you think, uh, general gameplay wise? Look, I, I think it's you know, Steve Ritchie makes games that shoot well, and Steve Ritchie makes games where all the shots feel great, mm-hmm. and that's what you got. Yep. The shots feel great, shoots well. It's fast. It's slowed down, obviously, you know, after you start playing the game, it gets dimples and, you know, there's whatever. Yeah. It doesn't um, have that fresh coat of wax on you it You can anymore. backhand the shots. Yep. I, I think there's the obvious comparison of this game because Dwight did the rules and Steve Ritchie did the design to compare it to uh, Game of Thrones, right? Because that was a game, you know, that came out in recent memory a couple of years ago. Um, I, like the, I like the way Star Wars shoots better. Now... You know, Game of Thrones is is kind of theme appropriate, where it's a little slower of a game mm-hmm. and flows right. I mean, he he designed to the theme where Star Wars is going to be faster. Uh, it's just, I, I don't know if it fits the theme though. I almost feel like it could be like a race car game or or, or, or like <laughs> yeah. Top Gun or something, right? <laughs> yeah. But the things coming right shoot, back shoot, at shoot, you. Yeah. Um, I don't. I I feel like Star Wars is just pasted on to this game, and it yeah. could be anything. It just, and that's the other thing with the gameplay. Um, when we were playing, it just didn't have a moment. Mm-hmm. And, we, and we started talking about this, I think, in our rules and sort of recognizing that I think good pinball machines have moments. This is just sort of like this kind of crazy, um, everything's going at once, like modes are going at once, and we'll get to the rules and stuff. Or yeah. The ball's moving so fast that you barely have time to trap it up. And like when you start multi-ball, like the TIE Fighter, you might have just started it and you have no idea because there's not like the ball doesn't, get held on to or there's not an introduction look i'm in multi-ball yeah Yeah, things just sort of happen in that game without the player having a chance to like pat him or herself on the back or get excited for what's to come it just happens uh versus like toy box multi-ball where it like holds the balls in the chest and it shakes and the the lighting goes crazy and you're like here it comes i did the thing yeah boom you need to have those a lot of games have those moments and that's what makes them so fun yeah and especially when the moments happen over and over again after a couple years and you're still excited for it that's what makes a good game Mm. this game i know we're bleeding into rules but that's also gameplay Mm. because you just are just kind of moving the ball around and maybe hitting arrows yep it just doesn't for a game of Star Wars, where a theme that is so meaningful to so many people, um, it doesn't. I feel like the theme doesn't do anything. Yeah, I feel like it doesn't really draw you in. I think maybe the best part is, as Kevin said in the attract moment, when they play the Star Wars music. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like that epic moment of oh, awesome! This is Star Wars. The Bubba Fett thing, where yeah. like the Bubba Fett mode, that is maybe the one thing that I can think of where there there is a moment where um, the flashes are kind of going off and you're trying to find Bubba Fett and. Yeah, it, you know that's okay. That's like a, a moment where it kind of pause and you have it, but I don't know, man. Yeah, it um, a lot of comparisons, uh, playfield wise. Like people, people, every time a new pinball machine comes out, uh, somebody on pin side will take an existing game and take the new game and stick it on top and say it's the exact same game. And with this game, there there's two that I remember. One was ACDC. I don't think it feels anything like ACDC. Um, no, it doesn't. The other one was actually the start. No fear. No, not no fear. It was the um, Spider-Man Home Edition. They just like 
they mirrored oh, it. Oh, I didn't see that one. And it was actually a pretty close match. I've never played that, so I don't know okay. like how, how different it feels. Um, it feels like unique in itself. It, yeah. The the one thing I'll say is like the ramps on it remind me of Star Trek. Okay. Um, there's the, how they're positioned and how they the, just the feel of them. They don't, yeah. feel, they don't feel like ACDC. They feel more like Star Trek to me. If I'm going to pick one or the other, yeah. Um, but the game does, I, I will say this, the game does feel like its own game. Yeah. Despite the way it looks or maybe a shot feeling like this or that, it does feel like its own existing unique game. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Yeah. There, there's a, I mean, every every playfield designer has their kind of signature things they go back to. And I can see like elements of No Fear in it. It's got the horseshoe loop. It's got the, like No Fear has the the little saucer on the left. This has the scoop on the right to kind of remind yeah. me of it. Um, but other than that, you know, I mean, Lawler's always going to have his upper play field, like jackpot shot and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's the, the, the sign of the designer really. Yeah. It's a C. Richard game. Yeah. Um, what did we just do? We did gameplay yeah, rules. Yeah, rules. Okay. Well, here's here's something interesting. He's ready to go to to, to university for this. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's there's a lot to be said. I think about rules, right? This is this is the bread and butter of games these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we unboxed the game and did our first gameplay stream, not the Bros show, we played. I counted twelve games before anybody got to multi ball. Now think about that. <laughs> yeah. Because we had no. It's not an obvious thing. Um, the the I think the quickest way to get to multi ball is the tie fighter thing. But it's like you got to spot yourself some tie fighters, and you got to hit it, and then you got to know that you got to bash this button, which is really weird, and no casual player is going to figure that out at all. Yep. Um, just, I'm not saying I hate that, like the bash the button. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. Yeah. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. But like I said, 12 games with with me and Kevin, and I think Martha was there, and yep. and some other people who who are pinball players before we could figure out how to get to multi ball. Um, it shouldn't be that hard for us. Yeah, it really shouldn't. And then again, when you get the multi ball, it's just like kind of like, oh, here comes some extra balls. Good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, not a moment like, oh my god, let's get back into that. It's like, oh, 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 started. Okay, that's why the balls are flying into the uh, play field. Yeah. Sure. And then when you were getting jackpots, it was like a million points of jackpot, and I hope yeah. they fixed that. But they did it in the newest one. No, because I could tell. No. You would drain the ball and get like eighty million. Well, but... they fixed that. They fixed the bonus <laughs> okay. since we since we streamed it. And uh, yeah, jackpot shots for a million were just like, why? Are, why are we even bothering? Yeah, playing it wasn't. This yeah. It wasn't fun. Yeah. It wasn't like it wasn't a moment. It wasn't fun. Um, not a big deal. And then the other multi balls, like the way it works is like there's um, I guess like three scenes, and then you kind of get to the end of the scene, mm. and you know there's like the hot dogs in the play field and by the hot dogs. It, like that's how the inserts look. Mm-hmm. And there's what four of those? So four, I guess paths. I guess you can yeah. go down, and when you get to eat the end of each one, it's a multi ball. But again, it's not an exciting. There's nothing cool about it. It's just mm-hmm. like now you're playing in mode, and there was a multi ball in the mode. Yep. I do kind of like that configuration of like the 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 modes into the the multi ball. So it's like, I don't know. I just I like that design choice in general. I I think that's a, it's a fun slightly different way to kind of play through the game so it's like oh i played this section got the multi-ball okay now i'll work on this section get through the multi-ball i mean it's i guess if i if i think about it it's kind of similar to uh ghostbusters because you play through the ladder of modes and then you get the um um we came we saw a multi-ball so it's it's kind of like that but you're playing um star wars instead i yeah. guess that's <laughs> i i don't know how i feel about you know again you can like in game of thrones you can choose two modes at once it's weird so in a star it's wars just movie. sort of like a Again, I don't feel like I'm going through a Star Wars adventure or whatever you want to call it. Mm. Like it's just so much crap is happening at one time that as somebody who even knows what to look for in a pinball machine, you don't feel like you're taking on a story. It feels pasted on. You, you mean you don't watch a movie and watch two scenes simultaneously? I mean, maybe that's got to work out to make the <laughs> rules work. But it's you know, if this is a theme you love, it's sort of nice to really enjoy that scene. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can enjoy the scene when two are running and you're just hitting arrows. I mean, ultimately, what are you doing in pinball? You're you're shooting things that are lit. But you can maybe focus on the call-outs or the actors or or exciting moments. I don't know, man. I don't know know the right answer to this because maybe this makes it more fun from a rule standpoint in a competitive game, Mm -hmm. as the question was asked before. But I gotta, I I somewhat feel like that there's a better way to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, again... I wish I can give credit where credit's due, but somebody mentioned in, in I think, the Pinside forums, it, it feels like uh, when they take a casino game, like uh, a slot machine, and they put a theme on it. Yeah. It's just sort of there, right? You're just mm-hmm. playing a random clip, and, and this happens and, and that, but it's not like you're you're really getting in, immersed into the story. I'm playing Golden Girl slot machine over here, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's the rules. Less stability, 
I don't know. Hard to say. At this point, I mean, the game's only been out for, for what, a month maybe? Yeah. Um, we didn't even talk about the multipliers, did we? Much? Oh, God. Yeah, let's talk about that. How did, how did, oh, my God. How can I forget the multipliers? I don't know. Again, I don't know about the multipliers, man. <laughs> so what we're talking about is that you can you can manually change what shots you want multiplied by hitting that action button or not hitting it and then moving the flipper button. I mean, that sounds confusing. It is. Um, it's just something else to think of while you're playing a game that's super fast and even kind of hard to trap up on yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it's just another layer. I don't know if I like that as a player. It's it's kind of too soon to call. Maybe yeah. you have to ask me in a year how I feel about it. And I, I've played it more. Yeah. It might be too much. Yeah. I sort of feel like that there's a small percentage of players out there, and these are tournament players, a small percentage of players who look at this and they're like, I fucking love it. Like That's This is awesome. great. This is what I, I get want, more yeah. control. I can just math it out. And when I do this and this, and then you just sort of like really nerd out over it, and it's a great moment. Great, that's fine. But for everybody else, you're just going to leave them in the dust. And casual players are going to have no idea yep. how to do that. And they're going to be blown away. And they're never going to get a high score. Mm-hmm. Whereas a, I feel like a casual player in a game that's out in public can have a moment where they shine and, and they put up a high score. Yeah. They're never going to do that on a game like this because you need to use the stupid multipliers. And they're and if you try to tell a, a casual player about these multipliers, they're just going to glaze over and walk away. <laughs> Even Martha on the brochure was like, I don't care about that. I just want to play. Yeah, you know? I, and she plays pinball all the time. So I worry. I like And I like multipliers. I, mm. I love the multiplier in Walking Dead, but it's simple. The X is on. When you roll over it, it will multiply a shot. And I can tell that to a new player, and they're mm-hmm. like, okay, I got it. I don't sense. have to get any deeper into that. Yep. But when you tried to explain the Star Wars system of, all right, well, you got to hit the button, then you got to rotate the... Uh, uh, and then you lock it into place. It, and it's yeah, it's on, just way... I worry, man. I worry it's way too much. Yeah. Uh, I I got. I was frustrated the one I was playing it. I don't remember which night when we were streaming. I had a really good game. I got through like some of the... Um, at least one of the, um, the latter wizard mode mini wizard mode multi-ball things and uh i look up and i had like eight hundred thousand points or 800 million points and somebody's like well you weren't managing your multipliers i was like i just had a great <laughs> game of pinball and yeah. i got a, a not very good score because i didn't manage my multipliers right like, all right you know, do you really want does that does that i don't think the multipliers make it more fun sounds like work i think maybe bashing the tie fighter and that's the button fun. that's yeah i sort yeah. of like it. it's kind of funny to watch people do it the managing the multipliers is not fun no yeah, because it takes you out of it too. Like I, so I was like, all right, I'm gonna manage my multipliers this time. So yeah, like on a Steve Ritchie game, you kind of get into the flow, you get into the feel of it. Do, I was like, wait, lost in the game. I need to trap up, figure out where my next shot's gonna be, lock it in, and then oh, look, I break my shot and I drained. Maybe I mean maybe if there, you make a game like uh, like how they made a game out of Monopoly or a board game, that yeah. might be a better system where you're it's a little slower and you're trapped up more and it's like stop and go, stop and shoot, mm-hmm. and then you have a second to think as a player. Yeah. Okay, let me let me do this, mm-hmm. and it's intuitive because it is a board game where it's a game that everybody knows and yep. you can explain it. But on Star Wars, I feel like it makes no sense. Yeah, I don't know why you would have all those multipliers all over the place. I mean, but there are people that will love it. Yeah, I mean, kudos to them for trying out something new. And I agree. You know, I agree. Maybe uh, like. Steve Bowden said, "Maybe, maybe uh, multipliers have jumped the shark. It's time to <laughs> to dial it, it back a little bit." So, all right, that's that's rules. I mean, we could talk for uh, years and years about rules, but let's move on to last ability. I will say it would be interesting because um, the one that we streamed that was my company bought it for route. Mm-hmm. So we put it at a brewery where we took out a Metallica that was earning very well, and we mm-hmm. put that in. So it's too early to say how it will do, but I'll let you, everybody know maybe next month I can, I can compare the two. Yeah. Right. And and then after a couple months, we're going to know better because Metallica was there for like two or three months and it consistently did well. So after people kind of put their money in at star Wars, um, you know, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. It might be too much for the casual people. Let's see if it hangs in there. So Austin's able to, to move the ball on the fly and it says it's intense, but Austin is like a top level player. He is. So I'm he's, not a- he's in that small percentage that, that gets it and might love it. Yeah. Um, I think of a bell curve, right? Yeah, Where right. the average person, I don't see how that would would uh, interest them. Yeah, I could see like if you had this game in your home collection and you got better and really good at it, and you're like, all right, now I'm going to start doing this multiplier thing, and then and like, no one's right. going to want to play against you, <laughs> right? It's going to be like when I owned a Mortal Kombat uh, fighting game and I right. got awesome at it, and nobody would play against how to, me how to because lose I was, friends. I was, yeah, it's like no, no, you know all the secrets, you know all the tricks. Ex- that's I'm not going to play this that's against. Exactly you. how I feel about that. Yeah. It's like. They know all the secrets and all the tricks. And it's nice to reward players who brush up on the rules, right, mm-hmm. of, a, of a pinball machine. I think that's what's cool about it. Yeah. Or maybe come up with different strategies. That might be a bit much. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like a lot. 
uh, last ability. I don't know. I guess it's it remains to be seen. I mean, you look at games like other Steve Ritchie games like uh, ACDC and and Star Trek, and those are like long lasting, beloved games of of the modern certain era. Uh, will this be one of those? I guess it's kind of yet to be seen. When I was at Pinburg, you know, they they had one there. Of course, uh, I had no interest in playing it. When I went on route to um, uh, put a pay range in there um, a few days, you know, before I left for Pinburg, I didn't even play the game. Oh, you really? know what I mean? I'm yeah. sort of like, I'm good on it. I yeah. don't, I, I'm sure I'll play it again, but I'm not going to go out of my way to play it. I'm just not that interested in it. Yeah. Um, I think it was fun. Yeah. I had fun. Yeah. Like I had fun during the stream and I had fun, but it's like, I'm going to play Aerosmith instead. Yeah. Kind is it going to keep you coming back? Um, I think maybe, maybe for me, the theme is a little bit, would draw me into it a little bit more since I like Star Wars more than you do. But, um, yeah, it, it it remains to be seen. I don't think it's going to be one of those like super long term keep it kind of games. Um, all right, let's, let's let's rate this sucker. So we'll go back to our uh, our rating scale here. Again, uh, zero to two, burn it. Three to five, expensive nightlight. Six to eight, solid game. Nine to ten, buy it. What say you? Um, it's tough. I guess the number that pops in my head is seven point five. Uh, it, it shoots well, um, and that's important. Mm-hmm. It looks so. It looks okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I had some fun when playing it, so it's solid. It's not. A, it's not a bad game. Yeah. It's not a disaster. It's just I would not even once that I think about. Oh, maybe I'll buy this game. Yeah, you know, like it just didn't cross my mind. Where there's a lot of games when, at least when I first played, I'm like I might have to buy this game, or it just increases over time and. And again, when I was at Pinburg, I had no desire to play it. So I think yeah. that, that says a lot. Um, I like it more than Game of Thrones. I gave Game of Thrones a 6.5. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm right there with you. I think it's a, it's a 7.5 kind of game, especially right now when the rules are kind of uh, still pretty rough. It's not even 1.0 code at this point. Um, hopefully, you know, with, with some improved code, a little feedback from players, hopefully some, some ideas get incorporated in there to kind of polish it up and and make it the experience that, you know, a Star Wars pinball machine really needs to to have and deserves to have. Um, is it the best of all the Star Wars games? Probably. But that's not saying a whole lot. Right. Because uh, most of the Star Wars games are garbage. But, um, yeah, that's that's Star Wars. Cool. All right. I think we're, we're time to wrap this up, Kev. Let's do uh, some call to action and uh, some plugs. Yeah. So let's, uh, guys, give us a follow on social media if you're listening to the uh, podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever. You can... Uh, Check us out on Twitch or at twitch.tv slash Buffalo Pinball. You can watch us live stream pinball five days a week with uh, uh, me and Nick and our, our partners, Mixer Tuna and Austin. We all, we'll have the bro show coming back here soon. Um, I had one of our viewers uh, from Australia come up and say that uh, he was really upset that it was summer and that he couldn't watch the bro show. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for the uh, Australia keychain, but uh, the bro show will be back in September. Um, but we have to enjoy summer as, as as little as we get here in buffalo um on twitter we are buffalo pinball instagram buffalo pinball youtube buffalo pinball facebook we got a group buffalo pinball and uh we also have a uh, steam group as well i guess it's buffalo pinball uh you can email us at talkpinball at gmail.com with your feedback you can also tweet that at us uh we usually i usually put a call out for feedback before we go live with our show that day and you can also uh follow and sub the twitch channel uh, and we, we talked about Patreon, but why don't you uh, give the plug for Patreon? Sure. So again, some of our uh, viewers, listeners asked that we create a Patreon page. So uh, happy to oblige. It's a way to support us beyond um, supporting us on, on Twitch. So if you're listening to this and you never watch us on Twitch, this is your way of, of saying thank you, of uh, supporting what we do. And um, yeah, you get to vote on what games. I think most meaningfully, you, you can vote on what games we review every month. If you want to donate the $5 or more level, or if you just want to say thanks to us every, every month, there's a $1 level, and uh, it's greatly appreciated. Just kind of, as I like to say, keeps us going, uh, shows us that people are listening and that they care and that they uh, kind of respect our time that we've put out there. So uh, that's Patreon. And I, I just want to say that somehow we made it through almost two hour podcast and I'm absolutely tired and exhausted from Pinburg. It's such a, a fun <laughs> time. It, it will destroy you. Yeah. Uh, and, and not a bad way, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's from exhaustion from having so much fun. Yeah. And you know, it, going to events like that, especially the Papa events really reminds me of what a great community of pinball people are. So it's like a big family reunion every time seeing everybody. 
uh, hanging out with the folks you see like once or twice a year. Uh, that's, that's why I play pinball. That's why I keep doing it. And it's great. And, you know, thank you to, get, to you guys for watching, uh, come out and we'll keep the party going at the summer open this, this month, come out and say hi, earn some magic pinball points, uh, play against Robert Gagno and some other high, high level players like Steve Daniels and Jay Fairbrother. And, uh, <laughs> see you. Well, all right. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> we'll see you then. All right. Later guys.